No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world, and it's finally happening. We finally got currency on the podcast. Yeah, man. And, yeah, man. And you said you wanted some of these yeah, uh, 2020 see the sour edibles. Strips right here. Actually, should we give them some other ones? Grab me my back because I feel like those ones are the old ones and uh, they're, they're not as yeah, good. Yeah, I don't want the old ones. I, I fuck with the ones that I have in my bag a little bit right. more. Anyway, it's amazing to have you here just because uh, I feel like this is probably one of the most requested podcasts of the entire time that I've been doing the podcast, people always wanted to see yeah, you on here. I appreciate it. I feel like I've been here before because a lot of people that I fuck with have been here. For real. And 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 they they represent they represent me well. And I, I'm, I'm I've been spoken on. You know what I'm saying in here. And oh, yeah. Always held in a high light. You know what I'm saying. These ones so, are the ones. Solid. These sour yeah. ring ones, dude. I fucking eat these literally like when I'm get done when yeah, I get done is. interviews every day, I just fucking start munching those things. Yeah, it is. Alright, I'm in. I'm gonna start <laughs> off with two for now. <laughs> you fuck with edibles often? Nope. Um, they don't really do anything to me, man. You so feel I'm, like I'm hoping that I say that and okay. then these do something. Right. And I gotta call you and be like, Yeah, I had to cancel the session, <laughs> bro. Like that that'd be cool, but I don't I don't predict it to happen, man. Part of my plan was like I'm, I'm gonna just eat mad edibles all day and be so fucking high by the time I interview currency that everybody knows and everybody like can tell that I just like overdid it. Fam, these <laughs> taste so good. Right? That's the one thing about it. The one time that it ever did me anything, I ate white chocolate pretzels. Mm. And that motherfucker was so good. That you I just like going crazy. Pack. And then when it was time to go where I wanted to go. And I went to stand up. It's like the sofa, the whole sofa <laughs> tried to go up with me. Yeah. And then I knew I should just sit back down and cancel the move. Mm. And I just hung out. I was like couch locked. For real, how they say that? It's the only time I ever felt couch locked, for sure. I feel like back in the day, I used to get insanely strong edibles way more frequently. Whereas now, it's a lot more manageable. I think uh, because there was a competition back then. Right. <laughs> everybody just wanted the strongest one. Right now, everybody's trying to stretch the weed that they didn't sell mm. in nug and flower form and cook it into the edibles as sparingly as possible and make their paper. Mm. Because like, if it hits you, or if it if it don't hit you, you already bought it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Whereas if you get you buy some weed from me, you don't like it, you could call me. Like, Look, I still got. 27 grams of the ounce so come right. get this back or i'm gonna pull up on you but if you buy a fucking chocolate bar and bite that bitch or you have it's not working that's on you yeah you know ever since i got these is like but these bitches good this is like the new era of my life of just eating edibles every day and just slowly building up this fucking edible tolerance that i never had before that's it stand this one up <laughs> that's what i'm saying yeah. The watermelon one is it. It's like That's I'm living it. I'm living like a double life because my girl really thinks that I'm just tired as fuck at 10 p.m. And it's like, nah, I've been eating fucking edibles since noon. <laughs> they taste so good. That's criminal. <laughs> That's criminal how good they taste. That's yeah. it. 2020. 2020. Yeah. All Shout right. We needed a drop. Y'all got it today, Jack. <laughs> Two motherfucking rings in. I don't even know what they do yet, but it's cool. Oh, we got one to stand up. That's cool. I was just That's looking cool. out for them. Um, no, nah, yeah. you know what's the craziest thing? We had mushroom sponsors on here multiple times. Which I don't really get because it seems like it should be illegal, but I don't think they're coming from me. I'm seeing people uh, like promoting retail mushroom. Right. I've seen microdose stuff like microdose jelly beans or something in a little mm. with a cool little logo on it. I'm just glad to be around and see all of this happening. Yeah. I, I like mushrooms a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Once it's never in a while. something that I just wanted to do every day. Yeah. Or even every weekend for that matter. When, whenever I've done it, I feel a little too freaky, bro. It's just I'm a little tingly. I'm a little like just I feel feels that a little happens. too euphoric for me. For sure. You know? I, I have to dig my fucking nail into my hand. <laughs> yeah. So sure like something that. hurts me. So I can kind of be like, all right, cool. You know, mm. my skin is not changing colors. Like I legit feel like tie dye. A like lot I'm of things feel overwhelming. Shit. Yeah. Like things are just sort of like last time I did it, I, I really it felt like maybe I was Jim Morrison. Because mm. I liked the doors so much. Right. I was like, I think some kind of way spiritually I have tapped into mm. this dude and I was like, You big tripping. Who put you, you know on what I'm saying? In the middle of me tripping, I was like, You big, big tripping. When did you get on to the doors and shit? Um like my skater buddies out here. Mm. This back like in like 2004 
and shit. Um, back when I was with Young Money and shit, right? Um, I had a lot of buddies who was uh, sponsored by DC Shoes. And motherfuckers right. who was snowboarding and shit. Um, like fucking trouble. Andrew was my was was, was super tight. We we still tight, but one that's of the when sickest I first dudes around. Hanging, Gucci hanging Ghost with motherfuckers and like that. And just look couch, up him, man. couch surfing in different areas and just kicking it and just just uh motherfuckers was jamming that shit mm. like motherfuckers would get high and put on what they like and that's what I would do too and we would just just uh, I was just picking up on shit. Dude, that's something that's underrated about skater dudes is that they end up with and I'll say the same about BMX dudes that you end up with mu- very eclectic music taste because the videos will yep. will have tons of different rappers throughout yep. all of rap history, tons of rock bands, weird like because world you're music. Because finding out what each one of those dudes are into when they lock into their zone so they piece will have mm-hmm. something else. So that's that that's what made Skate tapes, DVDs, so important. Right. Cause I, I mean, I was on their fan of the game. I wasn't really. I was not that tight. Right. But I, but I always was into it. I would watch like fucking Red Dragon fucking tapes and shit like right. that too. Because and my my homeboy uh, Renee Renee, he had music on some of those too. We ended up actually doing music together later on. In life. Right. You know, that's one of the funniest, uh, as long as we're talking skating, I got to do it, bro. One of my favorite things to do when I'm an interview rapper, go on Worldstar, search their name, and then look at oldest to newest. <laughs> you and Terry Kennedy's little beef. What fucking a fucking right. hilarious yeah, well, thing. Yeah, Cannot I believe that happened. Yeah, I didn't even participate in it. <laughs> you didn't even I like, did. that's the best thing. I like chilled until until the homie was like, what's up, Spiller? And I was mm. like, bro, like, you you remember? You know what I'm saying? Like it's all good. I'm chilling regardless. Right. So if you chilling now, then I'm still chilling. But like at least at least just know that you did do all of that shit. But it's all good. The craziest shit is just seeing. I'm watching an old ass video that rolling around in Watts talking about currency. Can't yeah, pull up to immediately. Watts immediately. I got they got to get me. He can't go anywhere. And then at the same time, I'm like loving low riding and like around here like, right going and I, I seen a dude that i know who was just in that video and i'm like i sent it to him and he's like bro where did you find that it's like yeah must seem yeah, like see, another stuff world doesn't go away <laughs> that's the thing about doing shit right you know what i'm saying like it doesn't go away you gotta stay like who you are man well, okay but for the people who don't know what exactly was the issue yeah, at I that time I, it, it was honestly i don't know i know i uh oh i think I think it's because of the the double XL cover. Oh really? Yeah, like see, it's it's always it's some other shit. Like it was it was the double XL cover, and motherfuckers felt like I should have, I should have like I guess represented them a bit more in my in my blurb in the interview uh-huh. uh, for double XL oh, shit. Oh okay. But they was talking like I don't know I didn't I'm not even the one who makes the the write up about you you right. know what I'm saying but I didn't have time to explain that to the thing that I saw was that basically like you were supposed to be in a rap group at some point with TK and them yeah and then it just didn't really happen or to it like his homies allegedly hit you up about doing music together and you and this is what TK's words he said that currency said no nah, I don't really fuck with y'all like that <laughs> Which is super funny to imagine yeah. you. Yeah, so look, check that. it out. You you you've been around me for all of like fifteen minutes. Right. Do I come across as the person who responds to you know an invitation to do music? Apparently, with, with, with people that I know, right. and then I come back. Nah, I don't know, <laughs> like that. Like I, that's cold. But you do at yeah. some point in your career as a rapper. Probably many times somebody has tried to do a feature yeah, with you, and I you guess, had to say no in was, some way. Yeah, yeah. But I'm pretty. I, I never, I never lace it up. Like, no, I don't fuck with you like that. Mm. It's probably like, yo, this is not the cut. Mm. Or, you know, let's get another one. You know what I'm saying? Or right. fuck, whatever. Right. Yeah. Or probably, or probably I was not asked because motherfuckers know I don't really fuck with everybody. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I'm. I'm so like straight up and down. It wouldn't even. It wouldn't even kind. Of, yeah. You know, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. That's st- why I couldn't participate. You know what I'm saying? Is that the only time that anybody came at you with like yeah, crazy yeah, gangster saying, energy in your career? Um, nah, because sometimes I check my DM, and outside <laughs> of outside of pictures of boobs right. and like shit like that, there's always like the occasional, you know, like yo, you got it fucked up, son. Like, well, I'll find you. Like, damn, but I don't even. 
I don't. I know I don't know you. you Just know about saying? some but some random shit that do. you don't even know you said. Yeah, for sure. But it's not. It, I mean, I I know it was never even anything I said. It's just mm. that that's people's springboard into the game. Mm. It's like, all right, this dude's already like people paying attention to him. So if I get him to say something back to me, then there's more clicks on whatever I have. And if my music is good enough, then. Nobody will even care that I got in by kicking some bullshit up. Mm. My talent will win over. And that's 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 not it. That's never it. Like, we all love to see a rapper going from not being known to being known. We all love to witness the yeah, transformation. That's what it's for. But let's be real. During the period of them not being known, a lot of thirsty-ass shit yeah, happens. Yeah, that's where it happens. <laughs> that's where it happens because it's like, what's the shortcut? Right. They Like, I already, I put auto-tune on my voice. That didn't do it. <laughs> I got the beats like this, that didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm taking pictures in front of cars that aren't for me. I'm standing <laughs> on them motherfuckers, that didn't do it. I got small pants, that didn't do it. What the fuck to I'm do? I'm addicted to Xanax. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm on all the drugs. I'm pouring it, I'm rolling it, I'm popping it. Nothing's happening. I'm gonna fucking punch this dude when he's coming out of the sex, spending his successful rap money. And uh. even if I get my ass kicked after I do that, who gives a shit? Because they're going to be like, yo, fucking Bingo Bango did this. And now Bingo Bango's everywhere. And everybody, mm. you heard the new Bingo Bango, Bingo Bango punched the fucking whoop de whoop coming mm. out of there. Now whoop de whoop's not hot anymore because he got punched and he didn't even see it coming. But now it's fucking Bingo Bango's turn now. And Bingo Bango's entire, like Bingo Bango could literally be a household name just as, oh yeah, that's the fool who. Because we all know that. Rest in peace, but the dude who ran up on the baby in the Louis Vuitton store, nobody knew who he was, yeah, and then on. he gets beat up, and all of a sudden come we know who he is. Bam, there you go. Like, buy my album. They kicked my ass. You know mm. what I'm saying? Buy my album. Go fund me. Whatever. You got, <laughs> you got on, but it's interesting to think, like, you got on in a, a much more traditional way, but still the early days of the internet of just For sure. having to really, like, do your thing. Nowadays, yeah. it's, if, it's, it's very different. Yeah, it's uh. You still had the network. You still had a song with Pitbull. Yeah, yo. That's your first world star post. Motherfucker, Pitbull and Mims. Mims is one of them. Let me Mims. Just pull this up. Ha! Yeah. Do you remember Mims? This is why I'm hot. Yep. Yeah, Mims is on that. Red song. Cafe too. Red Cafe. Red Cafe. That's it. That's all. I DJ, think so. DJ. It was a DJ. DJ yes. DJ. I can't remember. Oh, man. I almost wrote it in my notes. But I then. see him right now standing next to DJ Khaled right now, too. Mm. Damn, bro. That dude gave me a look, too. He, like, got me on that record. And right now, here I am. I'm so superstar jaded that I don't remember <laughs> the fucking DJ that gave me the look, man. It'll be in the comments. Yeah, I know. I know. Hopefully, it's not from him. You know what take I'm me, Take me back to where you were at in your life that that somehow became a song that you were on. Um, I was checking my uh, messages on MySpace okay. at that time. And motherfucker was like, yo, we're trying to get you on this record, you know. And well, no, 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 bro. No. I had done Where the Cash At. Mm. And this DJ, bro, the dude won an award and everything, man. <laughs> Can we just uh, go to YouTube and Please. search? Search currency. Bro, pitbull. This is <laughs> that should be Florida, enough. Florida. <laughs> this is a. This dude's a staple. DJ Nasty. DJ no. Nasty. Was that it? it Oh, yeah, well, it is DJ it. Nasty. DJ Na yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, DJ Nasty. Uh, DJ Nasty was some kind of way involved in me getting a beat from Street Runners or from the Runners for Where the Cash At. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I was kind of joining that circle of power mm. in Florida. Me and Wayne had rapped over the Young Jock is Going Down instrumental, and the radio station out there was playing it every five minutes. Fucking uh, Rick Ross saw me like at something and like brought me on a boat. It's like going down like that. So DJ Nasty is like, oh yeah, well, let's put currency on this. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And people, you know, that was just a time of people trying to throw me alley oops because I was fucking with with Wayne mm. and them at the loop. So it's like, well, clearly this is the next dude. So let's get into the process of doing that. Like that that happened. DJ Khaled had me in the fucking We Taking Over video. Uh, and like, I, that was, all that shit was like, 
getting crazy. That's like kind of what built in, it built up into me saying I'm gonna step back and right. do my own thing. Because I was like, oh, like this. It's funny because like I feel like if you came out today and you somehow become buddies with Wayne and they think about signing your shit, there would be so much less pressure for you to change now, because yeah. everybody knows that like the rappers who blow up are kind of like unapologetically them yeah. for the most part, yeah. you know? Yeah, absolutely. And and when I came through, it was like, you know, regimes were already said, we make our stuff sound like this, mm. we do this, we do that. And then there was me like trying to express to, and that was the same at No Limit, express to both those situations that there's a whole nother group of people mm. that I'm gonna, uh, that I'm trying to put this music out for, but. You can't do that because that's like bucking the system. We did what we we did. This is our formula. We made millions of dollars like this. If you're gonna come over here and play ball like mm. that, and I respect it. Right. So that that's why I was like, from in both situations, I was like, I'm, I better just step back and do my own thing, right. as opposed to like being counterproductive to what y'all are doing. Like I'm, I'm fucking it up. I'm slowing the process. But it's pretty amazing that you knew that much about yourself that early in your career. Well, that that's just from coming up in the game and watching their, like I, I watched greats put mm. their whole move together. So I got to see what worked, what didn't work, when they was happy with shit, mm. you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, so it's not necessarily about the money. Oh, it's not necessarily about getting this award. It's not necessarily about that because I didn't see motherfuckers still not be like pumped about the situation and shit. And that's like, oh, I only want to do what I want to do ever forever. I understand that's probably a pay cut because the shit that I I tell Musa to wave off that I don't want to do, mm. which would probably put us in another spot. But I always I'm just like you know, fuck it. So. Right. I mean, it's more important to be happy than yeah, to be for just sure. profit that shit is maximizing. Worth, it's worth the most money. Yeah. It's a battle because like I, I I model my shit after like Snoop and Rick Ross at the same time. Okay. And Ross is happy um he's happy and he's also like physically touching everything in the world because he's doing so much you mm. know what i'm saying i'm like damn i probably don't want to do that much i mm. probably don't want to launch a fucking hair care line and this and this and this and this 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 right. this this you know what i'm saying i want to have fun with the shit that i'm getting and then like dog half his compound out here and he's collecting all these cars and chilling you know what i'm saying working a bit off the off of off of his legacy and what he's already done to the point where he might not have to hit in the, hit the lab that much mm. you know what i'm saying but he could still do this this ad for the beer for, for corona and do all this shit like that mm. and still pick it up you know so yeah i mean that's like the puzzle of life is where do you want to end up because then all you have to do is just do the things until you get there yeah yeah that's true and just and not get caught up in the bread and that's how you end up killing your legacy mm. i think motherfuckers get in the game and as long as they can still make money they stop noticing it's not the same bag and then they they, they don't notice that they're just being tolerated mm. in the game because the motherfucker respect their name or what they did back when people fucked with them but they stay around so long till it's like people tired of that shit, mm. you know what I'm saying? so that's that's really the whole balance man like compare being a pro skater to being a rapper if you're a pro skater like there's this crazy ass time period where you'll see like an 18 year old pro skater coming out and he's doing dead man shit taking risks every day crazy shit and it's like i always look at that and just think fuck like how long is your body yeah, gonna let you sure, do that for sure. but then like the skate world like they kind of understand that dudes will mellow out over time and still just mm -hmm, do their mm -hmm, thing mm -hmm. but what's kind of weird about rap is that that just isn't treated the same way it's like you always need to be reaching these accolades and being better and they're gonna compare you to Pooh Shiesty because he's yeah. the hottest rapper right now yeah, you gotta be hotter than him to be true. relevant you it's know it's true it's true if you live in that realm mm. that's why i'm saying dog as, as, as and rick ross ross is still active mm. so he's he's enjoying his his work and sitting at that fucking uh coming to america 2 mansion <laughs> but he's still like all right we gotta put so and so on this record and drop some relevant shit and go he's still gone mm. like dog might make a record with charlie wilson 
for Christmas. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not because he needs to be on the chart that he's trying to do bill like to make a billboard record or some shit like right. that, man. So that that is how it exists. I feel like it because I think that I'm I'm blessed to be in that vein. Like I'm like like somebody who put down hammers and was on every fucking magazine. Right. You could be in, in skate in the skate world, have and be sponsored by every brand that really counts, mm. signature everything that counts. And then it's like, yo, he did all that shit. So you don't have to prove it. You know, it's like I show up somewhere, motherfuckers not about to fucking like you wasn't about to, I don't know if you were, but I doubt it. Like, you wasn't about to, like, throw an instrumental on, like, all right, so you know where you at, man. We got to get some bars from you. It's like, you know I could get out. I, I don't have to come in this motherfucker and show you that. that right. That's really how I do shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I did that. Yeah. So I feel like, I feel like they give us that. If It's just harder to get that. You mm. got to really jump down a few flights of stairs. Right. You got to put down real hammers for real, for real. And if you look at my skate tapes, all my lines is beautiful. And all I dropped was hammers forever and ever and ever. And everybody who knew, they knew it. Even if I wasn't like on fucking uh, Skate World mag, motherfuckers knew what was up when they came to whatever park or anywhere, I was the one. So, right. you know, yeah. Yeah, I, I and guess. all the brands knew they had to fuck with me right. anyway. It you is know? kind of similar to that, yeah. but the question you is: your shit. you just have to find the lane, uh, the lane that will last. Is really the whole question because it is true that like if you are the flavor of the month dude and you do features with everybody, you just burn out For sure. your value For really sure. quickly. That's why. You but know, you have to be yourself. Mm. Because long as they fucking with you for what you doing, it's not gonna go out of style. Right. If you fucking trying to maintain your relevance, so you changing your style, you getting on different kind of shit all the time just to make sure motherfuckers still staying your name. That's how you gonna burn out. Mm. The motherfucker know what you gonna do. Your shit is always it's like it's bread can't go out of style. Mm. Because you need it for the sandwich, you know what I'm saying? It don't matter. That shit can't go out of style. Right. Y'all gonna come out with ways to make a different sandwich. Y'all gonna stuff it with different shit, put shit on the bread, but right. the bread there, you know what I'm saying? So if you carve your lane out like that and become a staple, motherfuckers are gonna have to fuck with you. Mm. For years and years, as music change and the guard changes, when motherfuckers throw in a certain type of beat and they think that they about to rap about riding around and smoking or some shit, even if they don't know me, they A and R or somebody is like, this sounds like a spiller record. Like you should probably, mm. and that's how some. That's how I've maintained to be like, to deal with with every time the the sets of artists change, I'm still gonna fuck with it because my father like, nah, ain't no way around it. Like you got right. you got to do that. You know. Definitely. Yeah. What's the craziest ones that come to mind of like this person hitting you up to get on a song that you weren't <laughs> expecting? Man, well, I don't know, cause weed is universal, mm. and and that 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 and me having my own strain and and being in like in the brotherhood, like kind of with everybody who who make the best shit. I didn't been in every room, mm. like like ever, you know, wherever, you know what I'm saying. So so when a motherfucker reach out to me for a record, it don't be about nothing, cause we already jammed up off, off smoking. And you get inspired by by viewing the grow up. Sometimes um, I feel like I never need to go see another grow up because I've seen so nah, many. Nah, <laughs> because it's 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 a room of weed, and right. it's like it's a room of weed you can't even smoke right now. Exactly. You it's know like, what I'm saying? Kind of a... So I'm not tripping. Like I went to the Nike factory once, and it's like, yeah, okay, these are the soles to the shoes. Right. These are the checks over here. I can't. I'm not about to do it. So it don't <laughs> it don't matter. Right. I, didn't feel like I might I, as well go to football. I didn't feel like I was in a room of money. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Like. That's different, right? Yeah, the, that, you never seen. That's why I don't. I don't have the grow room rap video. Oh yeah, just walking around rapping in a in a fucking room full of uncured weed in a place that looks like Home Depot. Right, that's kind of one of yeah, many yeah, rap cliches. Right. You yeah. avoided that one. That yeah, that's like the fucking back in the nineties. All right, we're gonna do the everybody running scene right. in the video, and everybody's running down the alley from unseen enemy you know uh, what my favorite one is or whatever. my favorite one is that there's like white homeowners and for some reason the rappers have taken over the home and are and rapping every, in the home yeah okay <laughs> i like i like the neighborhood the neighbors are like confused they're mad to, yeah like now there's chevy's parked on the grass who's this i'm and there's always the dude water in the grass mm. like and the flowers wilt because y'all just moved in and shit like that 
Those are good. Those are good. I like. Uh, Damn, I made it a long time without doing none of that kind of mm. shit. I'm glad I was always able to make fun of it. Mm. I loved the Roots Never Do What They Do video, and 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 I think that stuck with me for a long time. Which one's that? Uh, they the whole video is just complete rap cliches. It's oh, never do. yes. Okay, it's, right. It's, yeah. it's everybody's doing the Junior Mafia with the champagne glasses, doing like this. They got the fucking running scene. Yeah. They got the fucking. Uh, Let's make these dogs look tough, like a dog behind the fence barking for no reason. They got that shit. That was like a... a and they're captioning it as they do th it. There was a bunch of self-awareness there that we hadn't really necessarily seen yet. For sure. Mm. Um, and, and you know what I was saying the other day? Straight jacket video. It's not like that. Put on a straight jacket. They'll yeah. think you're crazy. Well, you know what? <laughs> not, not at this point. I know, but yeah. that's like the weirdest one is like yeah, trying to nah, convince the world you're nah, a mental they patient. They do that shit right now. They could do it right now with a fucking Louis, Louis Vuitton straight mm. jacket. And then it's on. Definitely. You're the man. You know what I'm saying? But, but okay. Was like when you think back of those memories of you know, sort of having to do things that you wouldn't do these days because you're so early in your rap career and you just wanted to get yeah. in the game any way possible. Yeah. Like when you think, when you put yourself back in that position, what do you think that that version would think of what you've accomplished up to this point? I would be amazed. Like, like I would be amazed and then I would probably try to pattern myself after it if I saw that it could happen sooner because mm. I didn't know that it could happen. Mm. I, 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 um, every time I met somebody in the game, they wasn't how I thought mm. it was. And I was like, fuck, like nobody, nobody just chilling. It's, it's not going, it's not going to work out. You know what I'm saying? Like this, cause I'm not, I'm not like that. Right. I'm not like this. So, so clearly it's not going to work. You know what I'm saying? But, it. You don't have to say who, but we dug it out. what kind of things stood out to you the most? Just how people weren't real, like they weren't like the yeah, regular just people. people never used turned, to? And, you know, you just don't. They never turn it off. Like I don't, I don't have a rap voice, but motherfuckers have a rap voice. Mm. That's just one thing, right there. Like how how come how come something has to happen in in <laughs> your mind and in your throat voice box like to where you sound different to make the music like just your voice is your voice like do that and motherfuckers like talk in their rap voice because they have begun to believe they they'd rather just be that than whoever they was a lot know? of rappers even the ones we love admittedly are playing a character like they're they're basically yeah. a wrestler at yeah, least at times, you know. Yeah, and uh, that's cool that they admit it, but I don't fuck with that because like that's when I stopped watching wrestling. Mm. Like soon as my sister def like made me see it was fake, right. like showing me that they're stomping on the mat and not actually hit. I was like, I turn it off. Like right. that was it. I never cared again. You know what I'm saying? Right. Elvis. It was like when she told me there was no Santa Claus. My sister ruined everything that I believed in <laughs> as a kid. So when she when she let me know that wrestling was fake, I was like, that's it. So like that that's the same thing with with, with music for me, bro. Like if I if I believe you, then I then I, I could listen to your shit even more. I respect talent. Like some music is good, but I also know like ah, uh, but. That's not that's not what it is. Mm. I really I really value it if I if I feel like it's, it's the truth. That's why um, I think that's why people who who just like lifestyle rap is a genre I feel like I I created mm. because it's just about what the fuck I'm doing. And I think that people who rap like that um, you you stick around longer. Once you get your stride, because you're only talking about what you're doing, so you're creating your your ammunition for 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 your music every day you wake up. You right. know what I'm saying? But okay, but, what about like Kiss? You know, yeah. they they like they put on makeup, they're playing characters on stage, they got some good songs. Uh, uh, -huh, uh huh. I mean, that's kind of what some rappers are like. It is. Not many it of them is. wear face it, paint. It is. It but is. ICP does. Shut up. It ICP. is. But but you know what though. You also see Gene Simmons or whatever, like not right. like that, and and hear him talk, and he's not like, 
He's fucking talking. But I feel you like back in the day you didn't see but him without makeup. What, that, Maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. But you do now. That's all I could I could put it on. Like them dudes was just better at at fucking hiding, you know what I'm saying? Or, or going to do whatever they want to do on the low. But 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 if you encountered them, they were people. Right. You know what I'm saying? But now, you know, you're incoherent on the record. You're incoherent in person. I don't know how anybody makes it. Anywhere. All my all my examples I could think of of people who I respect who are clearly like kind of playing characters at one point is almost all back in the day. Whereas like now I feel like the shit demands a more real like level of realism. Whereas yeah, it's a lot, dangerous. but also kids I, didn't get anybody killed. Like p- kids wanting to fucking dress up and look like wrestlers and shit, right. like them and scream and shit. That that's not that's all right. But when you fucking want to get the Draco and hang out the sunroof <laughs> because that's what they're doing right. in the video, and you get your ass shot for real, mm. like that's different. I you saw know? a rapper recently have a big a big hit, like basically like a fucking TikTok hit, and he's he's. Kind of, sort of acting street in the, in the video, and then shit cooled off. His, vi- his next couple of videos weren't really doing that good, and all of a sudden he out here dissing like actual gangs. Like he For really sure. picked a gang and yeah. is dissing gangs that there are people in other cities who are going to shoot at you. Yeah, I can over that it. because that's because that's gonna get people talking. Man. And he's right; it it's, will get people. They, they got saw, me talking. They saw what happened. Um, what six nine was like? Oh, uh, fuck you! Fuck this! Wow, wow. And some people would respond and be like, yo, even if they were like, yo, so and so was tripping yesterday, they were still talking about it. So it always keeps shit going. Right. You know? People see that and they're not looking at how we feel about it or if we say, oh, that wasn't real. They're looking at the money mm. and how, how popular the person is or who's trending or whatever for whatever reason that they're trending and mm. they just need to get there. Because then they'll put their spin on it and, and get the money and do whatever they're gonna do. That's what they think. Mm. But once you get into that mix of being like a troll and just being like like just a ball of mess like that, <laughs> that's what happens. Like, that's normal now. Yeah, for sure. It's just about being the, the biggest ball of mess. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, I remember back in the day, like when Riff Raff came out and there were all these videos of him just acting so crazy. And we really like didn't understand that he was kind of trolling. Yeah. But that also he kind of really was this person yeah. he was acting like. Yeah, yeah. I fuck, I fuck with Riff Raff. Right. I, I got Riff Raff on. I don't know what album that was, but I, I put him on something. He snapped. Right. He snapped. I don't know if you know Ralph Sampson. Ralph Sampson played for the Rockets. I had his basketball card, but I only know him from basketball cards. He played in the '80s. Fucking. He said he's balling like Ralph Sampson. And that was in the rap, and all my homies was like, eh. and I'm like, no, bro, like, type it in your phone, bro. Look at fucking <laughs> Ralph Sampson, dog. And Ralph Sampson is from Texas, and dude is like, Texas, you know what I'm saying? That shit was big. I'm like, yeah, Riff Raff is. Because Riff Raff knows, like, he's every hard. basketball player, and I'm pretty sure he has said, I'm balling like, and then said yeah, that. For and, and sure. he, he used to always say, I could have played for the, and he said, every team. Yeah, I kind of feel like maybe he's got a jumper. He said I could have played I could have played for the Bruins, but I drank codeine fluid. <laughs> he said I just took a pill. I could have played for Vanderbilt. <laughs> he said that too, yeah. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. That's yeah. right. He said he uh Fuck, he did something with Larry Bird in Barcelona. Yeah, I, I, I done shot driving. dice with Larry Bird in Barcelona. Yeah, he shot dice with Larry Bird in Barcelona. And Larry Bird played for the fucking dream team that played in Barcelona. And I'm thinking that deep. And I'm like, you know what, bro? Quite possibly. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? A young riffraff is like hanging out with the dream team. And Larry Bird's like, yo, let's shoot dice. Painting the picture. Bro? You know what I'm saying? I remember one time there was a song that there was like a fucking song that had become like to us BMX riders, it was like we just listened to it so many fucking times. We put it in a video. I can't even remember what the fucking song name. I remember he said, "Trapping in Iran, I was dodging trash cans," and that was like part of the hook. Yeah. And I and I showed him it and asked him about it, like in an interview, to just ask if he had any memories of it. And he did not. It was like he was hearing it for the first time I when he heard it. I could believe that too. You got a lot of music like that. I could believe that too. Um, yeah, because I don't listen to myself. You don't. Yeah, I'm not like that. That's one thing too. Uh, 
like I always like I peep too like in the game you're saying like you see people be different when you get around and that was something I picked up from people too mm. like I was like like successful people out there I was like damn you listening to yourself so like right. it's just you it's other music out <laughs> like like albums dropped tonight like right. just now man let's let's listen to this you know motherfuckers be on these shit yeah yeah so I don't know I don't know my, I don't know my you revisit it at all you got to nah, listen to it a little bit before no. you put it out uh, how do you even like pick I what songs are on a studio, project yeah right if I if I love it in the studio then then cool and we'll hear it again when we make the track listing mm. but I'm not you're not gonna get in the car with me and and we just listening to you know one of my projects when you do a project like how many songs are you recording for it. like do you just record the number that you need or do you record nah, a bunch whenever, and pick the ones you like it's it's on whoever i'm working with i usually mm. work with one producer so whenever they feel like you know they represented themselves mm -hmm. because i'm i get a chance to to do my shit through words verbally so it's easy for me to express myself they got to express themselves through drums and pianos and shit so i'm like once you get off all your emotions you think you did enough then then we cool you know what i'm saying right yeah because i'm just gonna match their energy whatever they make so so we'll i take the whole trip with them too you know what do you like in your mind how are you still challenging yourself and becoming better like what are the things that you feel like you're actually still improving on to because i'm sure you don't want your best music to be behind you right like in what right, way right. do you feel like you're still improving um Beat selection, I always heard mm. I pick good beats, but I I think that I'm expanding my palette more, like always every year. Mm. But um but with but still with some class though, you know, no matter what genre of beat I, I pick up, it won't it won't be, you know, just some run of the mill one. It's gonna be the, the finest one mm. around. And um I think also on the entrepreneurial side um just building more partnerships and um and making moves i think I, i've done i'm doing more you than, than i usually do like i said before I, I i turn a lot of shit down but as i'm kind of preparing to not so, so much step back but uh, make room for for the rest of our label and shit mm. i'm looking at other shit i could do with my time you know what i'm saying right and shit that i know that that that'll keep working even when i when i step all the way off the scene right know? yeah do you how much do you care about being a businessman and how much how much has okay. that changed it changed once i had a son mm. i really don't give a shit like my my manager is pretty much my brother i know because you probably had enough life, money so don't trip you know you saying? probably had enough money to be comfortable for a long ass time yeah and at a certain point it's kind of like well i don't really how much more do i need yeah, but once not, you have a kid not, yeah it's not for me <laughs> you know yeah, none yeah. of it what I, the shit i already have ain't enough for him now because right. you know what i'm saying i got i got he, he have to have more than that so that's that was the point where i was like it's more so about starting businesses starting partnerships that result in me getting some checks but putting them all to the side for him mm. like a lot of shit that i'm doing now i'm as we're structuring the deals it's all payable to him i'm not even you know mm. i'm just going to do the work but the money's going to that kid like for sure like it's not even mine to put it in his account it's directly give it to this two-year-old do you feel like your time is best spent making music at this point or is it kind of your time's better spent basically monetizing the identity that you've created as a rapper mm. making the music because i gotta i have my team is is is, is small mm. so they're all very efficient at what they're doing so they're not going to drop the ball on that so all i have to do is pump the music out to stay relevant enough for them to keep netting all these other deals and opportunities because I'm staying relevant mm. and, and staying staying like a conversation in in music. You know what I'm saying? As long as I keep my constant core audience and, and they're willing to support whatever efforts I, I, I do, there'll always be brands that want to collaborate with me or use me to shoot whatever for an ad or whatever because they know I got a built-in mm. set of consumers that's, that are going to come with me just for the music. We'll, we'll buy this jacket because I had it on. Uh, we'll fucking smoke with these papers because they know that's what I'm doing. 
So, you know, I just have to keep on doing my shit, staying true to myself. And as long as I do that, they'll support everything else, you know. Makes sense. Yeah, when I was talking to uh, Josh from Raw about his whole brand and everything, his whole come up, which actually ended up being one of our biggest interviews ever. Um, yeah, that's one thing he said is that, like, all of a sudden, like, he just finds out that Wiz Khalifa and Currency are using his shit. And that just, like, opened his eyes to, like, that was the yeah. first time he realized how big rap could be for yeah. the brand yeah, and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That fool was, he was, like, blown away. Yeah. He was like, look, so you pushed the button on this? And he was like, why? And I'm like, well, I mean, I, I smoked zigzags and shit at first, but these, I, I didn't taste. I could taste the paper in the other joint, in the other mm. ones. You know, that been around forever. And he had worked out a way to where I didn't really taste that shit. The way he talks about rolling way. papers, bro. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a whole science to him. He's got the vegan Ferrari and all of that shit, so I know that's what's important to him and like the pattern of the paper and that's what makes it burn a certain way. Yeah. Blah, 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 that so stuff. much stuff about like all the, of that the, stuff. the like little tiny holes in mm, the paper. Yeah. What, the, oh, there's so many different kinds of paper. Yeah, Never now, he thought. said it, it, it does all of that the whole time because while he's saying that, I'm like rolling the joint or <laughs> stuff in the corner. I'm like, yeah, Josh, you know, I got you, bro. That's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. But yeah, fucking, we didn't even know. That, that 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 is what we were doing at that time. Wiz was smoking swishers when we first lined up, and I was like, "Yo, bro, blunts like stink, bro. Like, let's you should roll this. Let's do this. Smoke these, and then once we found the raws and shit, because it was it, elements too. Mm -hmm. Elements we found those first. Elements, Randy's elements, DLX. We were smoking all those. They were smooth, and then I, then my my homeboy in New York had gave me a pack of raws, and I was like. Uh -huh. But that I had the joint, I had the papers before the cones. Okay. Yeah, the but cones you, didn't come into the game until, I don't know, like 2010 or something. Mm. 11, maybe. How many blunts you smoked in your life? Did you ha Were you on that at one point? Blunts? Tobacco products, yes? Yes. Uh, Yeah, fucking, I was with Cash Money Records, man. <laughs> They're hanging out with Lil Wayne on the bus, man. We smoked a zillion switches. I don't even know. Right. I don't even fucking know. Uh... That shit was so crazy that the the you would see a pack of swishes, and it's not the swishes. They've already been, mm. you know, transformed in, into blunts. We Guts. were just running through boxes and that shit. Just already doing that shit. So that right. was cool. But, but then I got strep throat, and I went to the doctor, and the doctor was like, you got to find another way to do that. And then I smoked, I started smoking joints and everything was, was cool. So I started like pretty much preaching mm. to everybody. Cause I'm like, nah, man, the doctor said like, eventually you're going to be fucked off. So that's really why I was pushing that shit. That why that, that there's always that video of me telling Nip about the shit because mm. I'm like, cause he was saying when he got off papers, when he got off probation, he was going to smoke a blunt. And I'm like, yeah, don't survive probation. <laughs> <laughs> to then go and smoke a fucking blunt, dog. Right. Like, get with the joint. As I see, you got nah, your. You, I see nah. it's over there, it's, yeah, air drying. You don't like the way it smells? You do what you do, man. I just don't like what it's doing to you, friend. You know what I'm saying? It's not. It's not. He's right, though. It's not water. It's not. It's not mm. a fucking alkaline water, dog. Dude, I took a week off recently and only ate a couple of the edible candies every night, not smoking anything. Mm -hmm. It was my first time doing that in so But goddamn that, long. That was weird. See, but this is what I say. See, there's a warning on this. I don't know if it's a sponsor. Don't want to lose your check. Up. But with all Feel of free that to keep product, it real. all tobacco stuff, there's this warning, bro. It is. Let's read it. Surgeon General warning. Tobacco use increases the risk of infertility, stillbirth, and low birth weight. All right. So, boom. And then you go get a, a baby. pack of zigzags, <laughs> and the only thing it says is 32 sheets. You see what I'm saying? The government is pretty it's not sure dangerous that there's enough. nothing. Yeah, like nothing's gonna happen with that. Right. So I'd rather fuck with that. But think about it. NWA was bigger than Public Enemy. Yeah, because they were they were dangerous. It was more dangerous. Yeah, for sure. Oh no, I know? get it. I get it. Walk on the wild side, man. But at the same time, I'm like. <laughs> You're cool. I hope that we're both hanging around on Earth for a long time. And the stop. only thing I see you doing that might fuck you up is that. <coughs> You're right. Because I stopped all the other drugs. Oh, well, yeah. Mm. Stop all the other drugs, you know, first. And then 
get with that. Did you have to make a, a, a break from any other drugs at one point? Like, you were never crazy with it, right? Nah, man. I wasn't like, I, weed is good. Mm. Weed is good. I just like chilling. I don't, nothing else ever appealed to me. It all, looks, it all hurts. I see what they, they do cocaine and then their noses bleed. Right. That's going to suck. I don't want that. Um, <laughs> you never even tried it? No. Oh, okay. Nah. One time, the homegirl, like, came towards me in the kitchen at her house. With a key bump No, ready for and you? I thought she was about to grab my dick because she's, like, like making some funny face. And I was sitting on the oven, mm -hmm. like, on the stovetop. And she's, like, doing that that way. But then she went up to my face and tried to fucking put a finger in my mouth. And then it did that. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> and she was like, oh, it was just a little dose, like, you know. And I was like, oh, no, nah, okay, I got to get out of here. Right. I, wrote, I never went over there. You didn't feel she anything? She had a fat ass, too. I wanted to <laughs> hang out, but she <laughs> fucked that up. That was too, too. Nah, nothing happened. <laughs> I was mind fucking myself, though. Like, I was in the elevator leaving her spot, and I was thinking that, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm hungry, I'm nervous. Right. All kind of shit's happening, but nothing was fucking happening, man. I was fine. It didn't happen to The thing me. about Coke is it feels so good that anybody with a brain should be able to tell that it's really, really bad for you. Because, oh. like, 15 well, yeah, minutes it, after it, you do it, you feel like, it. shit. Oh. It really, like, you have to keep it going. Like That's how know? that happens. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. right. Because then you're going to feel like you, you'll regret it. Right. Oh. Like you see, potheads, that's how you become Scarface. Yeah, exactly. Potheads that's how become the fucking mountain. You know, you you'd be like annoyed as fuck if you didn't have any weed for a while, but you're not gonna be like breaking into a fucking auto I've body seen shop. What they do. <laughs> I've seen what they do. I saw fucking boogie nights. Right. Those dudes almost died over that shit. Right. <laughs> fuck that. Yo, that dude was like jerking dudes off in the parking lot or something. I've never like, seen that. I'll be honest. They get coke. Yo, he, he hit some lows, man. Right. He was doing pretty good. He's banging all the chicks in the porn industry. He's got a Corvette and shit. And then after that, his addiction took over. And he is like... Damn, I got to watch that yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. Just watch the beginning. Once once the drugs take over, What's the movie where they're like, it's Bob Saget and he's like, you know, I suck dick for coke. Oh, that's... You ever suck dick big, for man. weed? <laughs> yeah. Half half big. Big. <laughs> I mean, that kind of says it all. But I, yo, this is definitely girls sucking dick for weed. Let's be real. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's sad. That, that's true. That's true. But just because like they probably don't think sucking a dick is that big a they deal. They don't. Re they really think they finessed the dude out right. of the weed. But also, <laughs> like, weed is worth a lot of like, money. They for sure like get back in the car. Like, all right, girl, let's go. We about to smoke this shit. And it's like, all right. <laughs> there's definitely, bro. There's definitely girls out there who are like. I'll suck dick for five hundred or six fifty worth of weed, you know, like that. Five hundred dollars or six fifty worth of weed. You know, like they probably have like a scale, you know, Damn. like like if you go to other oh, countries, man. if you're gonna pay in the U.S. dollar, they'll charge you more <coughs> to make up for the fact that they gotta right, convert it after. Same thing it. with them because well, they gotta turn so it into money then somehow. The weed has a resale value. Exactly. Yeah. They can get on Google and buy like fake bags and yeah. then short it all and then sell the bags and then it's on. You know? I went in this this dude. I was out riding my bike with my friends and I see this dude and he comes up to me giving me weed and he's like, "Yo, this is my shop over here. Check my shop out." I go in. He got mad bags of like not actually the weed that it's pretending to of be course. and i'm like damn he's like he's like yeah i, I just sell these to people and shit i'm like bro like what are the companies think he's like oh they want to kill me <laughs> i'm like that's <laughs> fucking crazy man i'm like what a hustle yeah it's just like the bootleg table it's just mm. like fake jerseys bootleg tapes and shit you don't care you're just hustling right now right. a lot of people doing that shit. oh yeah you hear about all the time fake runs bags they open that backpack and they got all the fucking bags that you know are supposed to be in the display case somewhere yeah you know what i'm saying i'll always see they bootleg they got fucking fake andretti bags that's when i knew we had to be making some paper i'm like oh they bootleg the bag right I didn't. I didn't think we made it until it until that happened. I always see like viral shit on Twitter of like a runts bag, but it's filled with some mid ass weed with big ass stems and shit. Like who the fuck is falling I for could this? Dig it. I could dig it. Well, <laughs> shit, they got the spray, so oh, the yeah. motherfuckers not even looking in it in the club. They selling that shit in the night in the club. That's in the strip club. They just popping it open and they smell like it. You know what I'm saying? Close right. it back up. They're going to smoke it when they get back to the spot. They you, see what they did. You ever feel like you're around enough people who want weed that like maybe you should just be a weed dealer? You don't have to admit it if um, you actually have to. Well, I mean, 
I, I am legally, you know. Right. We got three strains over there that dreaded Canico. But being so, like the guy in the studio so, where when um, people need weed, like, nah, currency got you. Oh, nah, I never, I never, I never thought that. I never thought that. I've always thought that whoever the weed dude is is making a cool little bit of paper, and mm. that's good for him. You right. know what I'm saying? I've always took pride in finding the guy who comes over to take advantage of that. Mm. Once I hear, like, oh, that's like, nine different studio rooms in here and all these people don't have weed mm. so then i hit the home like yo come make you a cool little bag you know what i'm saying and then right. that's cool and then and you know what i get i end up getting like an ounce on the way out because he's like man mm. fucking so and so just fucking bought everything bro here you go right like all right and then i just grow stronger right <laughs> <laughs> one time i uh, was in the studio with glow gang and uh any desire to be that guy selling weed immediately went away when I saw what this guy's experience was like because every single one of them wants to crack open every single bag and smell it and say it's not big you know like they were just no, oh, they going for any it. possible angle no they wanted it like yeah, really but, bad but, but they also were just like they're like the most discerning customers to this guy I'm not saying they're always like that maybe yeah, it was just yeah. this day yeah. but I was just immediately like I felt like I saw Damn. Exactly you how bad that it. job might be. I watched this show, uh, High Maintenance. You watched that? No. Oh, man. You're so busy, like, trapping and doing <laughs> stuff. Man. You couldn't even remember that Half Baked was that movie. It's been a long yeah, time. Yeah, you, you don't spend enough time in front of the TV. You, you, you see, gotta like, take some time. You're that dude who, like, rewatches old movies all the time For and sure. shit. <laughs> I nah, can't do that, sure. bro. I, dude, nah, I can. I know. I know every episode of The Office oh, on I, mute. For some reason, you I know that. You can mute it and play it, and I, I got it. That's I definitely my it. most watched yeah. TV show of my adulthood. It's well written. For it's, sure, it's American Dad with real people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's like like all your best cartoon uh, scenarios acted out by real people. Mm. You know, who do you relate people. to on the show the most? Like, if if you were one of those characters, who do you feel like? Closely matches your personality. Robert California <laughs> doesn't show up till the very yeah. end. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Robert California, man, he was the best, bro. There yeah. wasn't like a stoner on the show, Mm-mm. right? Nah, but uh, Ryan was a heroin addict. They That's found, pretty close. Yeah, that was heavy. <laughs> that was heavy. They found a half smoke joint in the parking lot. Right, remember that? And there was that whole investigation behind it. Yeah. And uh, I think it was. It ended up that it was for. Uh, was it for Michael? Uh, he smoked at a concert. Oh, well, he ended up admitting that, but I don't think oh, that so that, that meant... wasn't his. So whose was it? Did they ever actually figure it out? The warehouse guy. The warehouse guy, okay. Oh, okay, probably the dudes who he went to buy weed from to frame Toby. Mm. Oh, no, but that was a separate... Salad, so it might have been yeah. those dudes. <laughs> the warehouse yeah. guys sold him the fucking paprika salad. It was those dudes <laughs> who had that weed. I'm sure it was them. That's why he went to them later on, seasons later, to buy weed. Yeah, it right. was them. Yeah, yeah. You know what that seems kind of fucked up is the the separation between the office workers and the the other workers. The warehouse, yo, that was all fucked up. It's tough. Those dudes, it's like they worked in a completely other building. They were like second class citizens. Bro. For real, it's crazy. They get paid less. But like Roy was Roy was tapping Pam mm. for a while. He fucked that up. <laughs> You know what I'm Early on too, and lo- lost her to some to someone who was in her same class. Mm. You know what I'm saying? To a beta male. Yeah, it's like he wasn't supposed- as big and strong. He wasn't. He wasn't. But, but class funny. wise, mm. in the caste system, like we learned about in school, mm. he existed at the level that she did socially. So it made sense. Yeah. That must have been rough for for Roy to lose his girl to and a little game. shrimpy guy with messy hair. He lost his gig too. He came there to kick Roy. I remember ass. that. Yeah. White saved he got his maced. Life, yeah. He got maced. Yeah. Roy ended up singing at a wedding to that other chick he married. He did, Roy. Yeah, and he made some money too. Really? He ended up remember the mugshot after he got yeah. his drunk driving arrest? <laughs> yeah. I always <laughs> wonder if he poked himself in the eye for that picture. If that's like a contact, do the makeup people know how to do that? Like, right. how do they give you a fake bloodshot right. eye? For TV purposes. When you're watching at home and you're thinking of yourself as Jim and you got to make this choice between Pam and Karen, which it's way Karen were you rooting? Every time. Really? Yeah, it's Karen in every show that she's in, mm. and I call her Karen in everything. It's she's Regina. Evan, What's her? She's Quincy Jones's so daughter. So beautiful. So yes. I should definitely like say her name. Mm. Uh, but she might she's, holler. She's Karen. 
in everything. Mm. You know what I'm saying? In light of 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 the negative connotation that right. comes with the name. Nowadays she would not be Karen. She is she is <laughs> Karen's ruined. She's different. Man. Nobody she's will different. ever name their kid Karen again yeah, unless they no, like actually want it. them to be like a racist that bird watcher it. or whatever. But she was the, she was the hardest. She was it. Mm. She was it. But I think that says a lot because Pam was sweet, but Pam was kind of like a local Yo, fucking loser. Pam was like you know, just trying to. She said, she told that girl, she's like, your heart doesn't know what it wants uh, until until it wants it. Uh. So she's like, I'm just sleeping around the office until I realize which one of these dudes is the best. Pam is not. <laughs> Pam's not the kind. Like, I mean, I respect building a life with a random regular ass girl, but dude, she wants to be a fucking designer. And she doesn't even she know Photoshop. She what? She didn't even finish art she school. She didn't finish art school. Karen goes she off and becomes a CEO programs. and shit after. Karen was it, bro. I think she was that ambitious. they wrote that in so that people, and I think it works on both sides of the board, ladies and men, like, do what's best for you. Like, if, if the signs are pointing towards, like, this is it, this is the fit, and you sleep on it, then you're going to end up with... What you thought you wanted, and it's going to be like that, man. She didn't even want Jim to start athlete. Mm. And they were going to make tons of money. And she was, like, about to shit on that. She was hating on that. Mm -hmm. And he was going to make the money for them, you know? That's tough to watch. Yeah, because most people end up with a Pam. Yeah, that's why most they people wrote settle. it. That's why they wrote that into it. Uh -huh. So that people would identify with them and be like, oh, man, don't do it. Because you're watching it and you relate to them so much, but then you watch the shit crash out. So it's like, yes, that could ha that will happen to you. Mm. That will happen to you. Get off of the couch mm. and tell this motherfucker no, or tell this one yes, or whatever, because you'll end up like that. But at some point, when you are choosing your woman, mm -hmm. you do have to just make a choice and, yeah. and accept that I'm not going to be Mr. Ambitious that's going to run after the next bad bitch I meet, right? Yeah, yeah, because they they, they don't stop making them. Mm. <laughs> but you have to guarantee that yours is indeed one. Mm. Might not be one, you know what I'm saying? Might be like the batter of the bunch that you saw, mm. you know what I'm saying? When you delve into it, you know, might not be it. So you really got to see, man. Take your time. Take your time. You're, you're spoken for in that regard? Hey, man, I'm, I'm just living my life. <laughs> okay. I'm living my life, man. I'm living my life. Right. What's close to the office in your mind in terms of, like, shows that have really captured your your attention? Uh, Portlandia. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, Portlandia is good. You that love laughing at white me. people, huh? <laughs> like honestly bro like like the homies are like too busy being cool to like to be that funny mm. it's just sometimes like sometimes they push it they take it too far you know what i'm saying like um like they have no problem like like white dudes like on um, like will like fucking show their butts and shit like jackass <laughs> and shit will take it too far i'll like, be laughing right. and then They'll do some shit that'll weird me out, you know what I'm saying? Take it a little too far for you? <laughs> yeah, but fuck, outside of that. That's the one, that's probably the biggest cultural gap between white boys and black kids is that white boys are are gay joke city. Yeah, And black sure. dudes, nine yeah. times out of ten, are like, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, yeah, and I, I don't know, man, like, where the divide is, bro, because I hear the shit and it's funny. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you can't bring and yourself even, to laugh. <laughs> I even know situations where perfect. There's, there's, this is perfect for one. Right. But it's like I can't do it. You know, I know I can't do it. Just like they know they can't be like, oh my nigga. Like they know they can't do that, and I know I can't do that shit. Mm. You know, that's that's the continental divide right there. Right. Yeah. You uh, remember when Tyler was doing the freestyle to Funk Flex? Yeah. And Check it out though. See. <laughs> And I was going to tell you this. Every now and then, there'll come one or two mm. that can do it. Mm. He's, then he, he's one. You know what I'm saying? I was also thinking about, um, he passed away, man. But, um, like, like Harold Hunter was, was, was wild but funny mm. to the point where like 
He didn't give a fuck like that might have, like he might fucking being a skater. You're yeah, gonna get yeah. that like sort of white kid sense yeah, of humor too, you know especially how he came that's what up. I'm you know, that's yeah. why I could relate to it so much because I hung out. That's what who I was hanging with. That's the motherfuckers I was around. So right. it's like I was hearing the shit. That's how I knew how to do those jokes. <laughs> but it's like I can't do the shit when I go back around the way. Like I have to code switch and then mm. go home and not do that shit because. But when I go back around there, I also don't do it because it's like they know for sure I'm not about to do that. Mm -hmm. And they, they're they even maybe monitoring how much of it they do because it's like, yo, we're weirding the homie out. You do you even bother to code switch at this point in your life? No, nah, because cause, uh, I remember I remember like I did it like to survive mm -hmm. shit. You know what I'm saying? And at this point now, it's like, what danger? Am I in? You know what I'm saying? Like, if I fuck this up, if I fuck this up in here, you know what I'm saying? Mm. This not gonna fuck up what I'm doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, when when shit was different, you had to watch how you were at a certain spot because like these motherfuckers will pull a chain mm. on you and none of what you planned on doing in your career or for your mom or anything will happen. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I was thinking so, even in the sense of like, if you're in a business meeting, yeah. do you even really bother to put on a no, different face? No, because they already know who they're fucking with. Exactly, That's what I'm telling yeah. you. Beforehand, you had to do it to survive because it's like, all right, they about to let you in the room. This might result in a 10 grand pickup. Mm. That when 10 grand was like, <laughs> so fucking you had to go in that bitch and not so much fucking doing fucking soft shoe dance mm. but uh, like make sure you know what i'm saying you 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 try to like you, you damn near like get into the mold a little bit of what what might nail it for them you know what i'm saying you kind of thinking what they might want it to be mm. and kind of do that you know what i'm saying but that shit feels stupid there's the my one friend ad that i do the show with and he is gangster i guess you could say and he he acts at least a little bit gangster most of the time you know yeah. he, at least like the way he talks and shit but then i heard him like pick up the phone with his yeah. bank the other day yeah see i call he it the completely pizza turned voice. it off like i he's call like, that the pizza voice because that's what i've been calling that since we were young because we that's when you first start doing it that's when you <laughs> first start doing that shit when you call the order a pizza and you don't want to sound like you in the hood because they're not coming mm, they'll tell you okay, they're not they're okay. not you're not even gonna get that motherfucker so you gotta be like um yes I'm calling. To, uh, could I? Do you guys still have the Sicilian? You got to do some shit like that so you could get that motherfucker. Because if I, you call the other way, it's like, oh, we don't have no cars or we don't have drive or some shit like <laughs> okay. that. They don't want to bring that bitch to you. So right. yeah, it's always been to survive, bro. Mm. And what's more survival than getting the fucking pizza to the house? Right. You know. So yeah. The biggest code switch is when I come home to the kid. Oh, that's everybody's yeah. code switch. You kidding me? Yeah. Yeah, I don't even speak. I'm like, <laughs> I'm a cartoon for my son. Right. I don't even know. I've said before, like, I don't know how much he reveres me as his father or if he thinks I'm just like, <laughs> like a joke. Like a thing, like, like something he has, like just some kind of fun. Just a how fucking, is he? He's two. Okay. So, like, my girl's six months, so. Oh, did. Yeah. Did. Like, listen, this dude, like, He's at the point where he's like, he's like, mommy, like telling me, like he hears his mom because right. like we could both possibly be about to be in trouble, bro. Wow. Like he don't, he doesn't know. Like I'm like, I'm not fucking in trouble, you know what I'm saying? Your right. mommy, nigga, like, <laughs> <laughs> tell me, but yeah. but it's like that though, yeah. Right. But that's just because we super tight. I remember when my kid was maybe like a month old or some shit. I was coming home and I had been watching the Gucci and Jeezy versus battle on my phone in the car. Okay. And so I come in, it's blasting. My girl's sitting there breastfeeding and with my mom is there. And uh, I'm laughing my ass off. I'm hooting and hot. I couldn't, you know, whatever. And then like, it, it just like hits me like, oh fuck. Like I got to come in gentle yeah, you every have to, time. You have to mute that. Yeah, you got to turn off that. Because you're walking in to a dude talking about- uh, Smoking on- Smoking uh, the- Redacted, yeah. Uh, a, a blunt filled with the ashes right. of another person. <laughs> yeah. So with that comes a bit of explaining. Yeah. So yeah. Although and now then you had the whole generation. It's it's my it's it's grandma, mom, baby. Yeah. Yeah. It's your mom. It's it's your girl's mom. Is there? No, also? it was my mom and then my girl. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Still. Yeah. That's boom. But boom, already, boom. like my kid is six months, 
and it already doesn't feel like I need to be like as quiet and peaceful as shit. Cause at that super young age, it's like anything loud and crazy and shit that could sort of upset them, you know? Yeah, yeah. Did you play music when she was born? All the time. Like when she when she was born. What's the first much. song she heard? Uh, I don't know, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it was like something gangster as fuck. It was probably Pooh Shiesty or something. <laughs> Like, it's like, I just early on, she just, have, I've never like played kid music around her. My girl does sometimes, yeah. but she's like hanging out with me. I play whatever. And she never has ever acted like weird about it. I played luckily. Superfly soundtrack. Like, oh, as soon tight. as he popped out, when they, they, we were like leaving from the, that where you have the baby room to the, like where you're going to kick it at. Okay, room. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like that's, I put that on for him. That's tight. And he's, he's like a smooth little dude for it. I have a, a playlist of like sort of gentle folk and, and classic rock songs that I've been building up for her. Hmm. So that's, that's been cool. Nice. That'll set the mood, man. Yeah. Have a chill baby, man. Right. Yeah, I feel like my son is super mellow, mm. like because of the music that we playing in a lot of times. Right. Like he 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 asks to watch the Mac. He knows that. He know when he hear the music to the Mac. He know when he know the difference between Superfly and the Mac. Oh wow. He's two. See, that's the that's the kind of decision is, do you want to feed him Coco Melon and all this crazy ass yeah, animation I shit? It's not real. Or do you want to sort of give him like like I want to I, I play Bert and Ernie around my kids sometimes yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. the old shit from when yeah. I was a kid. Yeah, me too. I don't want to turn them out on. All, it's me like too. the Coco Melon is like fucking fentanyl, bro. It shit yeah, is too powerful. I don't understand really what it is. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, but it's a hundred really times nothing. more powerful than it's heroin. It's only appealing. Like to their eyes and and their ears in a sense, but it's not giving them nothing. Mm -hmm. It's like making little noises and moving around. I don't know. I don't I don't fuck with it, bro. The Coco Melon, like the the thing that's different about Coco Melon to me is that the songs are so bad and they always use the same melody yeah, and they fucking fit words in that don't like they yes. go completely off beat. From a rap perspective, a it is yeah, terrible. It's not music. Absolutely, that shit is hard, mm. and 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 man, she'll put that on for him and like leave it, and 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 I'll have my eyes closed, and I'm trying to like kind of mm. use it as a book on tape <laughs> while he's watching it, and I'm just dying because I'm like, yo, this is they're butchering mm. this. This is not good. But uh, there are like rap songs too that I love that I listen to, and I'm like. I'm not looking forward to the day that my kid asked me what that line means. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, shit, all of it, that's coming. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But what, what are we going to do? I am I got to deal with the day that this dude asked me, you know, to fucking smoke an ounce with him. Mm. I said, I'm like, oh, yeah, dad, I don't want to hear that about don't smoke, bro. Right. Look what I found. Look what they showed me at school. Look what so-and-so pulled up on mm. the internet, bro. You never showed me this. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, Turns out you're incredibly yeah, famous so, for this. So, so, fuck. <laughs> so, Dad, you won an award? What, yeah, what? <laughs> so, you know, what are we going to do? Okay, it's how about, just about being, we're, we're all going to be cool parents. How about this, though? All right, your kid's uh, 11. He comes home. He's like, so-and-so beat me up at school. Yeah, I've been thinking about that one, too. What, like, what the fuck do you say? I've, I've been, been trying to prepare myself to not want to do anything mm. to the child. Or anybody else you know right. that's my whole thing because right now i'm not good with watching him play with monster trucks and shit with other kids mm. because motherfuckers would be like <laughs> mine and i'm like well actually no uh <laughs> That's his, bruh. You know what I'm saying? Your dad, dad. Or, or like peeling little fingers off of his shit and giving mm. it back to him and shit like that. So if he ever like, you know what I'm saying, motherfucker like scratch my face, bro. I was like, oh yeah, like well we both getting in the car. Let's let's go. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I, <laughs> let's I go. can't, I'm hunt I, can't him be, down. I can't be like that. <laughs> so that's that's tough. You asked the real thing, bro. Yeah. I mean, I've been trying to prepare myself for that right now. Right. Just and it's just like looking at him do his thing. He's just super innocent. And I'm like, yo, like the world is not how you think it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody is not gonna think like you're cute and smart yeah. and shit like that like there's gonna be motherfuckers who can't stand you and I can't I can't fathom it I don't know how but it's gonna be like that there's motherfuckers who can't stand me and I, I can't get it you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying so like that's gonna happen for you I know how I dealt with it you know what I'm saying but it's like I don't want you to have to deal with none of that shit but it's, mm -hmm. it's coming just for you being alive you know that shit crazy to the point where I 
I'd be wondering, cause I used to think it about myself, like if my parents like, like, like thanks, you know what I'm saying? I'm stoked, you know, to have a chance to like make money and ball out and shit. But um, I also got to deal with hella shit that I wouldn't have had to do if mm. I never was here and I didn't know about it, you know what I'm saying? So that shit is, is wild to me not having a kid because I used to think about that a lot. It's like, mm. I'm glad like I'm here, but it's like, I also have to like not be here, you know? So, it, and it wouldn't matter if I didn't, if I never was here in the first fucking place. Mm. So having a kid like that, that make me think about shit like that. Sorry if I got like super fucking, <laughs> but that's, that's No, that's, that's super one. real. Yeah, I gotta take know? a piss, I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah that's, that's real. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't never give them edibles a chance to work because I be smoking at the same time. How many How many do you have to eat? To, are you smoking at the same time? All right, so how many you had to eat before you know you ate them? Uh. <laughs> I was one away. I was one shot. That's why I don't feel them. He said you got to eat three to feel them. I oh, ate bro. two, yeah. You ain't feeling me yet? Yeah, I was one shot. <sighs> Oh, one shot. He's eating more. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, maybe I that's why I told you too. so much about, about you know, oh. about how I feel about my kid and his existence. Let me maybe ask you that this. was the fucking sour rings. Do you, um, do you have a temper? Well, she'll say yeah, but I don't think so. Hmm. I don't think so. I think I'm cool. Like it take, it takes so much, so much <laughs> that it probably doesn't happen. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like right. by the, so I can't remember the last time. Mm. I ain't that much. You know what I'm saying? It take a lot. I don't really extend myself nowhere in a situation I kind of can't control. Mm. So ain't shit gonna happen to piss me off. Right. I'm in my studio. Or I'm like in my car cruising right. with my car club where we park at. Or I'm at the Jet Life office or some shit. So nobody gonna crash my party. You know, a harsh nothing out, bring no vibes. I don't fuck with. You know? Right. Yeah. Like I feel like I'm lucky to be in a relationship with a girl who is so sensitive and not aggressive that that part of me, like in the past, when I think about arguments I had in other relationships and shit, where it got like aggressive as fuck yeah, because yeah. you each keep up mm -hmm, in the tempo mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but with my girl she never really gets past like a two or a three yeah, so, so even you our, can't yeah. do it so our worst yeah, fights you crazy for our still worst tripping. fights yeah. still don't even really have like yelling yeah. they, they, they're like a little yelling yeah. but not like yeah, they never that's like good. that's you know that's perfect that's it because then you still could do what you got to do mm. you got peace of mind you can make your money mm. that other shit like anger fuck all the money up in mm. any situation, in a relationship, in anything, in business, once motherfuckers get mad and shit, they start thinking different, the business is crashed. You're not mm. gonna make no money being pissed. It ain't gonna work. Right. You can't even win a boxing match pissed. Mm. That's why a motherfucker try to draw that out you and make you mad. So you start trying so hard to knock them out, they miss one fucking thing and knock you on your fucking feet because you putting everything behind this punch mm. trying to hit them so fucking hard. Right. Yeah, that, it's better to just stay cool. Man. Like, relationships are one thing that a lot of people feel comfortable just being their most animalistic, emotional self in. And at a certain point in my life, I started to kind of realize, like, you don't need to just say whatever the fuck comes to mind. You need to be at least a little methodical about doing what you need to do to get what you want. To For make sure. her happy, to All make right. it so you can go about your life and enjoy your day without having to, you know, like just because something comes into your head, you know, in business, you don't yeah. think just because I'm thinking something, I'm going to say it. Why yeah. Why reserve that you for your pick, girl? You just pick your battles. Yeah. You just pick your battles, man. You know what I'm saying? That's what my mom always tell me about mm. shit like that. Just pick your battles because you're going to have some. You know, but but don't do it all the time. You're making yourself miserable if everything that raises an eyebrow 
creates a comment and pulls this out of you, then you're going to wear yourself out. Mm. So you just protect yourself because you know how you're going to get trying to express this point. Mm. So if you don't even trip, do something else, you save yourself because motherfucker not even going to get it anyway. That's going to drive you even crazier. Mm. And if they don't get it, then you louder and, and just fucking spinning out of control when you could have just smoked the joint mm. and took the car out. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. And by the time you get back, that shit dead. Motherfucker don't even know they did it. They oblivious to it. So they've done so much other better shit. You know what I'm saying? It ain't even no thing. You probably right. got something to eat. And Definitely. just kicking it. So you got to just go more into that. You, like in terms of the brand that you built for yourself and, and of yourself and shit is very much, you know, like to just be a very like cool, calm, laid back person. But a lot of times the shit that we see rewarded in rap, especially yeah. now, is the most aggressive, disrespectful yeah. shit. But I also think it creates it creates a balance and, and it gives us room. Mm. Because so much of that make my shit stand out. Mm. Because I'm not doing that. Like, right. That's how I always, like, I always got girls off that. Because this motherfucker's like, oh, because girls are around. And mm. then it's like, I'm like looking at Lowrider magazine or something. It's like, well, all right, what's up? I mean, that shit works. the thing to me is like, just how do we make that? Like, I, I would be like a lot happier to see a nation of young yeah, kids who, who would rather be a currency than a well, redacted. I'm yeah, not going to even throw a name way, out the there. The way but. that happens is if we uplift those people that are doing that mm. instead of like not so much throwing dirt on us not putting that same light on us mm. you know it worked out super cool super cool for j cole just now this is true and like i feel like that and i had already felt like just with the shit griselda was doing the mm. shit i'm doing freddie i was like um it's it's a shift it's mm. not so much a shift but it's people wanting something else because they're getting so much mm. of this other one Anything they put on that's in control, like of the media, anything, that's all they're going to get. Mm. So it's like, all right, I'm going to fuck with this too. You know what I'm saying? And that's the crazy thing is that hip hop is so big that even me right there trying to put that narrative of like, oh, all the biggest shit is super violent and disrespectful. Well, I mean, you can definitely point to a lot of fucking rappers and say, yeah, that shit is huge. But you would be remiss to not also say like... Kendrick and J. Cole are pretty much like the biggest rappers or a, yeah, a, even sure. a Drake who is not because, out here with bad energy like that. Because motherfuckers are being... You can't avoid the other shit. Mm. So this other... The, the, the alternative is the one that people going to gravitate to because mm. it's, it's not hard for me to hear about oh, I'm going to rob everybody, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Mm. It's on the radio, it's on TV, it's on fucking... It's sponsored ads, it's everywhere. So I'm going to go and look for something else. Mm. That's the same thing we do that with clothes. We do that with anything. It's like they, if, they, if they were giving us clothes, like a free uniform, then we would be like breaking out. Like we would be radicals, motherfuckers, like the people on the Matrix. Well, I want to wear my own clothes. I want to do this. You know what I'm saying? That's mm. what people do with music. And we all gravitate to something that's, that's different. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. that other one is too easy to get. Right. We fuck with it because we like smothered in it. So it's culture, okay, but I'm going to go and grab this too so it works mm. out. That's why I feel like there's always room for us. We always could win, mm. you know what I'm saying, because we're the alternative. Yeah, and I mean... You got to ride to the club and from the club, bro. Right. You're going to hear that other shit in the club. Mm. You got to get in your car and smoke one on the way back. You don't want to hear all that shit. And, and when I really think about it, like when I was... When I had the shop on Melrose and shit, it's like I definitely met a lot more currencies than... Gun toting yeah. maniac yeah. style dudes, yeah. you know. Yeah, I met, I met I super trapped out that. dudes, but I always you know. used to say that. I was like, I think it's more of us, you know right. what I'm saying? It's because it's easier and it's safer. This shit is just more legit. Mm. That like you, I know them fools too, but you got to be a certain motherfucker because mm. if you really living like that, shit is coming back to haunt you. You're not really getting sleep. Mm. Like that's not for me And motherfuckers who real with themselves, They know if it's for them or not You know what I'm saying So it's more real people mm. Than crash dummies You know and then as real people We make a decision Either we gonna be about our neighborhoods or whatever And give our life to that shit And they do that Or it's the motherfuckers who's like I'm gonna give my life to trying to find an alternative way mm. 
Mm. Then if we bust a move and motherfuckers see we did it, it's motherfuckers who want to do that too. And, and you know, that's how you begin to normalize it. I always hear people say like, you open the door for motherfuckers to kind of be themselves in music and just kind of rap about what they want to rap about. You mm. know what I'm saying? So that it just get bigger and bigger. So right now, we just at the beginning of it. In a while, it'll be different. Mm. It, it won't always be like that. It wasn't like that before. Right. Yeah, it's just kind of a question of how we sort of lower the, the temperature on the whole. You yeah, know? well, you can't because it's making money. It's a money mm. thing. The other shit don't make no money because mm. we promoting, like, chilling and shit. Where's the money in that? Mm. The other shit is about products. Everybody's rapping about products. So that shit, we gotta, they got to push that because everybody eating off that shit. Mm. Whereas a motherfucker rapping about, you know, doing good for self and getting in shape or eating better or some right. shit, that shit ain't going, that ain't making no money. I think uh, consumerism is like one of the underrated vices for people, like poor people and shit. Because, I mean, you know, convincing somebody to become a drug addict is, yeah, that's horrible. But if you convince somebody that they need to live outside their means and spend money on stupid shit yep. and clubs and fancy cars before they put their money into, you know, buying a home or, or, or whatever, like... That shit is just as deadly, like selling people yeah, on that that's notion. That's it. That's it. That's it. But it makes more money mm -hmm. because you're telling people to fuck their lives, spend everything they have. So with that said, we got to put the light on you mm. because you're getting everybody paid. That's the way that shit works. You know what I'm saying? That's why I say it's a pay cut to be the way we are because... There's so much other shit we can't, you know what I'm saying? They're not going to reach out to us for it because they know, you know, mm. that's not what we're going to push, you know? Like, we were having the conversation the other day about how, you know, early 2000, or, you know, 2002, 2003, where everybody was rocking a white tee. Mm -hmm. And I was like, bro, I can never see that coming back because everything always trends more expensive. And, sure. But but yeah. at some point there does need to be a correction, but also it's kind of hard for me to imagine something that's very inexpensive becoming the cool shit. Yeah, well I think that they would just they would just luxury it, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying to the max. Yeah, like not I'm not like not not like a polo shirt or something like that right now. I mean they just they would just do something else, bro. I don't know like a leather band. <laughs> or something. There would be something extreme, something that's not even cool. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Or maybe like maybe they'll just be like those tall tees, like mm. super long or some shit like that. I don't know. We gotta set the trend of like you know a lot of the tech CEOs like uh, Mark Zuckerberg like literally wears the same T-shirt every day, same pair of pants. I could dig it. That's like I dig it. I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. That's why I, I, I mean I, I only wear sweatpants and dickies. Right. And when and the, the thing about dickies is like. I could just wear like that green pair like twice this week, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like uniform pants. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If we was at school and my school wore the green pants, I would have wore that pair like three or four days or nobody would know. Mm. So that's how I feel about that shit. Just keep and it's always straight and it's clean. You can't get nothing wrong. Definitely. You know, like they always say, like, you know, I'm sure songs of yours like just capture certain moments in your life. But the summer before I moved to Long Beach, when I was still living in Brooklyn, there was a day where I just went out with my homie Craig and we just rode all day and I just got like shitloads of footage of him. It was, ended up being like a two, three minute video and I edited it to uh, the fucking, what is it called? So High with French Montana. So that yeah. that song to me very, like just marks a specific day yeah, over the, cool. my last summer in New York City yeah. riding bikes with the homies. Yo, that was that was a summer. I was in New York City, mm. and fucking being in New York was real cool for me because people had access to me. Mm. Like like Frenchie like saw me a few times in the studio and just like yo 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 get on this record. You know right. what I'm saying? And I just knew like he was cool with Max B. Right. So I was like you know nobody knew. What was gonna happen for him? Pretty with early days of his career, yeah. yeah. but see what what he felt like. He felt like people weren't really fucking with him. Who could make good music? Mm. And he he was honored that I I did that verse for him on so high. Where I felt like he was looking out for me, 
like mm. putting me more in the street, you know what I'm saying? Because I do like underground, like the the music I was making was was wasn't really for his audience. Right. So when he reached out to me to get on the record, I felt like he was helping, like like me, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And shot a video. I wasn't really being visible. I wasn't shooting videos and shit. He shot a video. They had 150 strippers in the Hamptons. <laughs> so I'm like Frenchy, like fucking thanks, bro. But what happened was when he fucking blew up. Every year that he came to New Orleans, every year he come to New Orleans, he fucking reach out, bring me to whatever is going on, mm. stops whatever event he's doing in the middle of it. Like, yo, this motherfucker was like, like fucking with me when motherfuckers weren't fucking with me. Like, oh, you so boom, boom, like damn. He'll fuck, just dude, tap in tight. every time and, yeah, and bring yeah, you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just you know, hit me about all this shit. Like if I'm out here and shit, if he see I'm out here, he'll try to tell me to come around and shit. But I'm always doing other shit, you know. I appreciate the invite. So. But dude, that must be fun to be that guy, though. where it's another artist show, it's a popping ass show, and then they say, "Boom!" Yeah, and boom. everybody in the audience is not expecting to see the person that they did that one collab with yeah. one time, and you get yeah. to be that guy yeah. that just experiences yeah. that boom yeah, rush yeah. of excitement. Nah, nah, French, French always, he always do that shit. He, he a hundred man. That's he's tight. Solid. He's solid. There's a couple motherfuckers like that. I'll always speak on. It's a it's, it's a gang of people that 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 kind of I didn't really fuck with how they was and I didn't really extend no relationship. With, but um, motherfucker like him stood out. Two chains like mm. he always was a hundred. I knew him <coughs> before he was two chains. Right. And he stayed the same. Like if we if we fucking hit him for a verse, like we'll get that motherfucker back tonight. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He stayed like that. Ross the same way. I was actually probably getting, gonna get him on this Alchemist project too, and um, fuck, you know. He's like such a big artist, but he does seem very approachable to that. In that, like, yeah, he's on sure. a lot of people's projects. Yeah, yeah, nah, he stayed live. You know what I'm saying? Because I think he know what's what. He know what's what. He recognized who like who picked good beats and who's who real. You know who's kind of cre- anybody who could hold their own and got their own base of people. He acknowledged that because he a, he a businessman. Mm. So he know fucking with you, you come with one, 200,000 people, mm. wallets that's probably going to do something. You know what I'm saying? So he got to fuck with you, mm. you know? That's what that is. That's all in just being true to yourself, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. You were talking about that uh, summer that you spent in New York. When you look back on that, like, could you ever imagine yourself really living there? And, and what's it like being like a famous person in that environment um, for you? It it was cool because things were just just bubbling for me. So like that was I was just on MTV jams. I was fucking. Uh, like, you were hungrier all, back like, then. Like, what'd you say? Were you hungrier back then? Oh no, no, because I, I like money every year of my life. I mean, like, just so, no. hungry for opportunities. No. Like, you were chasing money no. more then? No? No, I was not hungry back then. <laughs> I'm trying because, to narrative, because narrative I this. Still, I still want, I still want, <laughs> I want it. I mm. want, nah, no way. If I was if I was hungrier back then, I wouldn't have done everything I had to do today and then make it over here. Right. Musa would have gave somebody an excuse, like, oh, I would have missed one thing. You uh-huh. know what I'm saying? Like, I still want everything you know fuck that because it's gonna work like jim jones is the same way right that's somebody else who i who i who i admire like the way he do shit mm. like never say die like dude just mashing forever so and, and why not if it's still working for you and it's gonna make money for you then you got to do it you know right for sure that's why yeah i think i think rap needs to treat their veterans mm-hmm. more like skateboarding does mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. in I'm still happy to see this dude who's 39 years old yeah, do a yeah, kickflip. Yeah. You see Tony Hart do a 540 or whatever. Like you're, that's amazing. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. You and and some rappers do get credit for that. Yeah, and I feel like you're works, one yeah, of them. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It works out if you do it the mm, right way, right. bro. Yeah. Like if you just a, if like if you got in doing clown shit, you can't do that forever. Mm. Nobody gonna want to see you doing that shit once you get to my age and shit. Mm. Like, you staying true, you're 100, they know what you're bringing, you know what I'm saying? They want to watch you reach right, reach, reach more levels and get older and just like, damn, I can't wait to see how he moving mm. as an OG. Because he came in the game as like, like an OG, you mm. know what I'm saying? And wasn't doing no fuck shit. Jada Kiss still selling yeah. a lot of verses. Yeah, because look, it, that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, he was he was stainless when he came in. You know what I'm saying? He never did no no crazy shit, and his pen was was nuts. You know, hundred percent. Um, were you bummed when Screech died? Yo, it 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 fucked me up just because I didn't know like uh, 
what I don't know what happened. I mm -hmm. didn't even look into it because mm -hmm. I don't like that. Death fucks me up. Really? I don't really like to look into what happened or how they found you or whatever, whatever happened. You right. know what I'm saying? It just stopped. You know, because I, I, I was kind of struck but by he's how like the person who I just didn't think would would die. Right. Like that's you know, that's, like, that's, that's was a not, big thing as a that's kid. That's like you know? you know that's like not even a human being to me. Right. Like we just said Screech. We didn't say Dustin Diamond. Right. That's his name. You know, that's yeah. who died. Screech Powers. Like, we're saying Screech. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's why I didn't even feel like he was a person. Like, like, that could happen. Just lusting after Lisa Turtle? Yeah. You know, she forever was and ever and ever. Not being Dustin Diamond, like, and dying. Did, what happened? I don't know. So, I'm to look it up. I feel like Lisa was, like, my first African-American oh, crush. There's computers. There's wires. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got that. There's a desk. And it says news. Right. Can somebody get... <laughs> Laura, can you're we get stats? Laura, you can't sit at the news desk stats. if you no. have no details. No, I'm telling them. No, no, no. Okay. I don't want them to pan and find it. Oh, I just cancer. want somebody to... Oh, shit. Damn. He did not suffer. He did not have to lie submerged in pain. That's very... That's an intense way to put it, but okay. Yeah, fuck. At least we got the rest of the cast. He was only 44. Isn't that crazy? Shit happens though, bro. Yeah. And then when the shit like that, like they didn't say what type of cancer is. Like, mm. is that even preventative? Right. Like, and shit can just happen, bro. It was, it's like a family member who you knew when you were young, and then you didn't even check in on him for like twenty years, and for then sure. boom, he's gone one day, and you just like fuck. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, but I couldn't call Screech. <laughs> so it's all right. Bro. You probably could have. <laughs> nah, you so could have. Screech intro on the Dustin project Diamond. or something. I mean, that's Dustin not gonna. Dustin Diamond was getting higher than my shit. That probably was cool. He probably was. He was probably getting higher on something else. Oh no, nah, they still got some chicken on this bump. I was gonna roll another one, but this shit still scrape. I respect it. So, what are you listening to lately? Oldies. Really? You know, uh, the stylistics. Uh, I just found this group, uh, the Manhattans. Okay. The Manhattans, Am I Losing You? Mm. Shit. That's a fucking cut. Um, War. They still, I, I fuck with a lot of shit they made. Uh, I've been getting into uh, like more James Brown than I usually listen to. Mm. I, always listen to uh, I always listen to Marvin Gaye and shit. Smokey Robinson. You kind of had like a Santa type experience with me because I saw an interview where you were talking about Marvin Gaye and you were talking about how fucked up he was. And I, you know, Ma Marvin Gaye is like probably the Wait, number fucked one. fucked up how? Like High? on drugs. Yeah, he was, he was, there was a concert. <laughs> let's, let's, let's get it. Let's stop. Marvin Gaye wasn't fucked up, like a fucked up person. Right, 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 right. Marvin Gaye at the Montreux in 1980 or uh, 81. He comes out, uh, does his whole little fucking spiel. They have to call his name three times. He comes out, bam, 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 to the crowd. The crowd is not there. He's in the, There's cameras taping him. He's like, whoa, they're over here. He turns around, does the whole fucking thing again. All right, you know what I'm saying? Later on during... This is, yeah, this shit this stuck with me. Later on during the concert, you should watch it. Later okay. on during the concert... He stops it to call ladies from the crowd to dance with. Uh. All right. He uh he's got and then they bring him two. He's got his guy, Mr. James. Mr. James brings one chick, she's cool, then he brings another chick, look like fucking Bo Derek. Marvin Gaye fucking does a little one two with the one chick, sends out the way with the Bo Derek girl, he's all fucking whatever. He calls for his boy, Mr. James, to come grab her, take her off to the fucking side. Mr. Right. James gives him a drink. <laughs> he comes out, he's talking again. Marvin Gaye's like the people in the crowd are like, what's in the cup? Oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> I wouldn't be up here loaded or no shit like that. All and right. then he just went back into the thing. So I'm like, yeah, Marvin Gaye was fucking twisted at the show. Right. Yeah. That's I mean, how you want to perform. That's like my number Not one. Not fucked up. Right. Just, you know what I'm saying? Just a light glaze so mm. you could slide across the stage. But that was just like, as a kid, that was like the <laughs> number one shit that my mom would play around me. Marvin Gaye? Yeah. Word. And so I never even would have thought of that. But then you said that, and I'm like, oh, shit. Well, that, he was in the was, industry. That was He was his in the industry. You sometimes. know what I'm saying? So he was high, and he was doing this thing. Right. He had his homie fucking take the girl that he wanted 
to the back. <laughs> like, you look at this concert. Mr. James comes out. He takes this Bodera girl by the hand uh. off the stage. The camera's still seeing him. And he's, like, bringing her to the back. Like, you know, you know for sure. Because Marvin Gaye, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, bam, this, this is it. We got one for the night. Right. Fucking Mr. James takes her to the back. Probably like, yeah, just chill. Eat some fruits. Marvin's got this over here set up on the table. Just kick it to the end of the show. Right. Bango, bango. It was the music industry, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Definitely. Fuck, I'm high on stage doing my thing. Marvin Gaye was high on stage doing this thing. You right. Know? And he said he wasn't, but he talked about it. So I was like, I... Right. Yeah. No, for sure. I mean, it's just weird how... I know everything about like all the modern hot rappers. It's just kind of like part of my job at a certain point. I just know way too much about them. But all the music that I like from back in the day, for the most part, I've like never really made a, 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 an attempt to really like learn about them as people. Mm-hmm. So lately, I've been doing a lot yeah, more I of that. that. I do that, and that's yeah. pretty dope, honestly. I just do it because I, I relate it to myself. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I just try like I try to see like what they were seeing. I feel like I saw a lot. You know what I'm saying? Just moving from like being with Master P and shit and traveling mm. and running around with cash money and shit. I saw like a lot of the best of everything. You know what I'm saying? I saw mm. like the best cars. I saw all of that shit. So I wonder what like what life was like when motherfuckers were seeing like Corvettes and shit back in the 70s. Like they had, they were touching that paper. Mm. So they were buying the same shit that we buy with our money right now, but shit just looked different. Right. Like the best furniture and neon and shit in the houses and all that shit. I watch Miami Vice a lot because right. of that for the same reason. Just to see like what what that Maserati looked like and what, what changed County. Because people still mm. wanted jewelry and shit. Shit just was a different way, you know? You, did you ever read, or you should definitely read if you haven't, uh, Dapper Dan's book? Nope. <sighs> It just you. like paints this picture right. of what it was like at that time and there's all these dudes who are like newly rich off selling drugs and they're just coming through and they're all trying to outshine each <laughs> yeah. other and he's the fucking conduit dude he was open 24 hours a day yeah. he would catch little cat naps in the back yeah yeah it's some crazy yeah, shit yeah i had to read it but that, all that shit like the, the stories about all of that shit was from you know it's big bro the cars they drove and everything everybody was just being their own superhero with the money Mm. making their sales into superheroes that's that's still what happens right now Mm. you know it's just social media and and being able to have access to what everybody doing in their life so fast you know Mm. it kind of takes the impact away right it was crazy when like dude with butler with fucking rich porter what got whatever car he got people didn't know until they saw him and shit. So it's like, bam. And then by word of mouth, people talking about it. Then stories get bigger. You telling somebody else, you make it bigger and bigger and bigger because mm. it's not really right there, you know? Right, right now, we could look at the picture. Mm. Right now, we can appraise it and look up how much that shit was. Mm. People do that to me all the time. I post something <laughs> that I like, and the motherfucker will be under the comments like, oh, yeah, well, th- they had those on eBay for fucking four twenty nine, so that's not really that big of a deal. Like, mm. oh, yo, what the fuck? Right. I'm happy with the purchase I made. Yeah. But that's the way it is. Like, like for me on Christmas and shit as a kid, I didn't know, like, the, the, the stuff just appeared. I didn't necessarily know where it was from. His kid, or not him, but my, my boy Josh, his kids, they know that literally all they have to do is is go on Amazon to get anything <laughs> in the world they want, and they know how to talk to Alexa. So they know how to find out how much it costs. Yeah, They'll it. tell mom, oh, it's only nine ninety nine. Yeah, so get it. <laughs> I'm not asking for nothing too crazy. And they know how easy it is for them to buy it. Yeah, damn. And so all the, all the mystery and intrigue yeah, is gone. gone. It's gone, bro. It's gone, yeah. That's what it is, bro. It's microwave, mm. you know. That's te- like it's the gift and the curse, bro. The more advanced we get, technology, you know what I'm saying, we also kind of overexpose ourselves to shit. Mm. Take, and, like take the mystery away from shit, yeah. like you said, bro. I mean, that's the biggest thing as a rapper in this age is how do you make your shit have some longevity and have that built-in mystique to it and like i think one of the biggest things is just the scarcity of like if if you can have a fan base that builds up an appetite yeah that's like the most invaluable thing yeah well i think originality still mm. is will carve its way because right now i say a lot of music sounds the same but what happens is someone will put an innovation mm. on things sounding the same like i'm not big on auto tune and shit like that but occasionally, somebody will find a way to do it different 
to where to catch my end. I'm like, all right, bam. Mm -hmm. And those people just so happen to be the people who blow like they won't <laughs> go away. Mm -hmm. Like Travis Scott, that sound, that that's that won't go. You know what I'm saying? The way he does that, that shit will last. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Even if he stopped making music, people will always go back to it, like this mm -hmm. was this was a thing. You know what I'm saying? That nobody else was doing. And if anybody else did it, it'll sound like that. But that all, but at, when you listen to so much auto tune, there's a point where they all sound the same. Mm. Well, you got to break out of it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So there's motherfuckers who do it. You know what trips me out is like when X died. I felt like since he died, I've seen so many people, basically like young artists, like it's the same flow. They try to come for his lane for sure, and it does not work. Yeah. And that makes me feel like when he died. It was almost like a genre died. For and sure. honestly, I kind of feel the same way about like a like Lil Peep and Juice World and shit like that. Uh -huh. I kind of like, uh -huh. I think it's super hard for somebody to come in and fill the shoes once the person who's kind of doing the best job at for that sure. style dies. And, and they didn't usher nobody else in. Mm. They died too young to even have like an artist where they're like, oh, this my this my guy, like this one I'm fucking with. So mm. they didn't really bring nobody in to where you could feel like, all right, this one I'm going to fuck with. Like, like, like. Like I feel like um, I'm I'm glad that so many people lended a hand to Jay Stone with the project that he was mm. that he, the, the way he kept mashing after Nip died. People were like, you know, all right, I'm a fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? That was cool. And you no, know, these other dudes didn't get a chance to put none of their homies in the mix. You know what mm. I'm saying? So that that's it. It's like that whole style died with them. You know? Yeah, like the fans aren't. Stupid, like they can tell when they're being yeah, sold trying, a subpar you're version. You trying to do that? You trying to you trying to do that shit? Yeah. Nobody want that. Yeah. Nobody want that. That's why I say it's always room for motherfuckers who making like who 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 writing their lyrics and doing that shit that way because people get tired of that. You know, always being fed this one. You know, mm. it's always gonna be wrong when you break out. Innovation is the key in any in any industry. Mm. Fucking like cars or anything. You all gonna use the same tools, but you gotta come up with a way, you know, to make your shit different. Mm. Originality is what's gonna keep, you know, keep you alive and make your shit last, you know. Mm. Yeah. What is the good life to you, and how much? And and what's the difference that you between what you'd say now and what you would have said 10, 20 years ago? Twenty years ago, I'd have said the good life was like a Lamborghini, at the house, a swimming pool. Stacks of money, um, some chains, you know what I'm saying? Um, now I know like the good life is like um, passive income. Mm. Um, honestly, that there's nothing else because you want to get comfortable and still be making the money like you were working after mm. you did, after you found out what real work was. Right. You still want that money, so you got to figure out a way that you can get that money without busting your ass. Mm. So when you figure that out, that's the good life. You know what I'm saying? So it's really about going, getting down, grinding right now, stacking money to then fund some business ventures. Some shit not gonna work. Some of them will work, and then you got some some fucking passive income coming in. You know, but and then you could just go through your twilight. The you thing know? you said about twenty years ago was like mostly materialistic yeah, shit, for sure. and just that shit. just doesn't even come into your mind yeah, at all I'm when cool you think about it now. now. I didn't had I didn't had shit and gave shit away. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't even believe that. I remember like paying for some of the shit that I get that I've given away. And like I can't believe it, but it's like <laughs> fuck, I don't know, I don't fucking use that. Like you, right. you feel like that about that, you know what I'm saying, here, yeah, bro? But that's crazy because I probably wouldn't have gave you that dollar amount for whatever the fuck that was, you know what I'm saying? But it's it ain't shit. Whatever I bought, it really ain't shit, you know right. what I'm saying? But here, yeah, you know, yeah. And I can't get that same money out of it, so you take it. You care so much about it, you know. Right. That's not no real thing, but. Having some money that's gonna constantly come through to take care of everybody, take care of the bills, all the shit that I got, all the material shit that I got when I gave a fuck about that, being able to maintain it, mm. take care of it, keeping my car collection straight, you know what I'm saying? All oh, that's 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 real. Mm. How much has fatherhood does fatherhood factor into that? Like does that seem like that's kinda like the meaning of life to you yeah, in a lot of ways sure. now? Yeah, to the point where it's not even it's not even the thing I, I I would say because it's it go without saying yeah. like none of like I said before none of the shit I have is for me right. no more 
it's all for him. That's why I say maintaining the car collection and shit, mm-hmm. because it's kind of like how people take care of their coin collection and they know they're not going to sell it in their lifetime. It's for them to give it to their grandson or some shit like that. That's how I feel about everything I have. Mm. Like, everything, every watch I have, everything. It's like, I, I think about, like, when he's, like, asking if he, yo, can I wear can I wear this to the dance? Like, can mm. I wear this watch? You know what I'm saying? It's like, bro, like, yeah, fuck. That do you, do you wish point, you had had you know a kid earlier? Um, nah, because I ain't had that much paper. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I've I seen a lot of my friends go through the struggle. And so to the point where they still had to risk their lives on the street and shit, mm. and you risking your life when you got a motherfucker that you can't be fucking putting your life in the balance about. Right. And you putting your shit on the line because you love your child so much. And I didn't see motherfuckers crash out and, 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 and get smashed out there and, and their kid just fending for themselves, you know? Right. And they've and I've, to the point where I've seen them grow older now. I see, like, and I see how, how, you know, how that affected them. You know what I'm saying? I definitely see that shit. Right. Yeah, I've been there to help shit, but there's only so much I could do, you know what I'm saying? So I, I see the difference, bro. That shit is, is crazy. Right. It's crazy, but you know that your homeboy did the shit he did because of that situation. Right. So I always was glad I didn't have a kid at that point. Like, I, I thought it was cool because I'm like, yo, the older you get, it's cool that you could crack jokes with this motherfucker and it's, and it's like that. But, you know, I know a lot of motherfuckers who didn't, it didn't work out mm-hmm. like that. I got maybe two homies who aged with their kid, and right now they could crack jokes and motherfuckers moving each other, cars and shit, and just doing shit like that. But I know a lot of homies who who not here, you know what I'm saying? And their kids just, you know, it's like, it's two motherfuckers. It's two people I know. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it's two people I know that did it the right way, that, that, that survived, you know what I'm saying? And 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 I know a, a gang of motherfuckers that did it. You know? Do you ever think you're too used to being rich, and that you don't really think about what life could have been no, like and what life is like for I'm normal used to people? Not having it because I didn't have it the longest. Right. You feel like yeah. even until like even throughout yeah, the yeah, time yeah. we've known you, you didn't really have it yeah, together. Yeah, like, like like there wasn't no real money. Mm. Like like it wasn't until like we got like jet life apparel and shit happening. Like, now it's not so dependent on, on the tour. Like, we survived the whole pandemic. Nobody scratched their head once. We bought cars and fucking kicked it mm. because we had other shit going on. We didn't have to hit the panic button. So now, right. now it's like that. If the pandemic like happened that, five, six years ago? It would have been fucked up because it's mm. like, yo, we fucking, we bought a Ferrari fucking yesterday and was pretty much banking on throwing all of this money back, not five years ago, 10 years ago, mm. fucking uh, throwing this money back into it or paying for it like that. Or we, we got this and fucking we, didn't pay, we was gonna throw this money to them later on, you know, fuck that have been fucked up. So bro. you were just fucking off money on cars way too early? Um, not fucking it off, but I was trusting the hustle. We talking about the pandemic. Nobody saw this coming. Right, right. We de- like like the, the tour bus was guaranteed money. Right. So it was no problem to tell Musa, fucking yeah, we want to get that because he doing the math already. You you fucking do shows like nothing, bro. Or you drop tapes like nothing. So fuck it. Right. Go ahead, we'll get it because you have the money already and you're gonna get X Y Z right back. Mm. Nobody saw this coming. When this happened to people, it fucked them up because they were living like that. That way that I'm saying is not such a strange way of living mm. because everybody was, the money was automatic. And then this shit happened. It taught a lot of people a lesson. You know right. what I'm saying? Like we, we, we tightened our belt out of respect mm. because it's like, yo, pay attention. Like this shit happened. We don't know how long this could be. Even though we straight, it's just fucked up. People going to get weird. That's just, you know, just tighten our belts. So, How many people you know do you feel like you're responsible for with your career and basically that make your whole career happen? Like your manager, obviously. Oh, shit, man. It sounds like a bigger operation than I kind of assumed it was. It's, it's, it's bigger in the sense that each one of the people that I have entrusted, like, my career to, they have, like, their own outlet. So it's the same way that when the Fed's watching you, and they do that picture, and then it breaks off into these trees of underbosses and subbosses. These <laughs> motherfuckers I might never meet. Right. You know what I'm saying? But they the motherfucker who facilitate this for you. And all I did was ask you to do X, Y, Z. I just know X, Y, Z got here. Mm. I don't know, you know, because I always meet a motherfucker that's like 
trying to like blow the doors off. Yeah, I did the um the sudden said like for sure, you know, dude gave it to me though, so I don't know what you know what you're talking about. Mm. You'll get around when you're supposed to get around. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you look at somebody like Bronson with his TV show, that to me is just like you know a pretty genius move. Obviously, sure. he's gone through it for with sure. like leaving Vice, doing it on his own. I don't know exactly how he views it from a business standpoint, but just the idea overall of him marketing himself that way from so early on in his career do you look at movies like that and is that the kind of thing that you can see yeah, for yourself yeah yeah i mean it's what i wish i was i was doing right now mm. it's it's um it's why i'm glad like i get opportunities like this for people to see like i can complete sentences and shit like that you know <laughs> i mean yeah saying? you're like good on camera yeah, the way he is like know? i don't know man dude's like burnt out you know so yeah. i don't know he's like hi i don't know if he's gonna be punctual i don't right, know right. this blah 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 so when I do shit like this, you know, motherfucker know what what what, what level I'm, I'm coming mm. on. That just comes from me being too cool for school, though. Mm. I turned so much shit down forever and ever and ever that people just came up with their own reasons to why I was doing that. Mm. They didn't know that I didn't think they were genuine. Uh -huh. I didn't think that, you know what I'm saying, that they really understood why they were calling me to come to the show. It's like, you just coming because... I went to do this. You don't mm. actually know. That's why I never really wanted to do shit. Cause I'm like, I know that the music I make is for a certain group of people. So if I really check you out, I'm like, nah, you're not even cool. So how the fuck, you know me? Like I'm not, I'm not coming to that shit. Mm. So I, I always, I fucked a lot of shit up. You right. know what I'm saying? Because of that, I'm sure like, like <coughs> that's that's just a, a a real test to to me and my manager's friendship. I, why I have to, I don't even say that's my manager, you know what I'm saying, until it's like some business that come around. People just think that's the homie. But then when the motherfucker give me some paperwork and I be like, all right, boom, you know what I'm saying, I'll do that. But that that's why, you know. Mm. Could you ever imagine your career taking like a, a Joe Budden twist and all of a sudden like music becomes on the back burner compared to you doing something else with your personality? Yeah, if I if it was something that was natural and cool to do mm. and, and, and the bag was bigger then shit, yeah. Mm. But the the music is fun to do. Right. And, and as long as people want me to do it, I will, you know. I, I, I told both, like I said, I, I kind of model my shit after Dog and, and, and what Ross do. But I told them both as I, like, as as I was, you know, just, just reaching my OG status. I'm like, yeah, I'm probably going to get the fuck out of this shit. Mm -hmm. And they both was like, that's fucking crazy, you know what I'm saying? Like, as long as it's working, you got you to gotta work and you got to do that shit, so. Right. Yeah, I mean, when you think about Snoop, it is pretty fucking crazy to think how effortlessly he has just glided through his career while just being the coolest motherfucker. Yeah, well, that's just off being himself. All these kids that's don't even work. remember him being the coolest gangster motherfucker. Yeah, that's yeah, ancient yeah, history yeah. now, you know? But he was cool the whole time. <laughs> exactly. It's the whole reason, like, my mom didn't even know what I really was listening to. Because mm. she's like... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She's like that, but it's like mine. Like, right. they really talking about they're going to jack this dude for his datings, and now he's dwelling through the depths of hell where the rest of his bust-ass homeboys dwell. But she didn't hear that part. Wow. She just heard, doom, 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 doom. That's she so didn't true. know that shit even happened. Yeah. So he did that shit right. Yeah. He did it right. You know, so anybody who could do that shit like that, <laughs> man, that's that's the route. You hear that song, uh, Who I Smoke? No. It's these kids from Florida, Young and Ace, and his okay. boys, and it's like they use this Vanessa Carlton sample, but the whole song, there's like a crazy gang war in Jacksonville. Oh, wait a minute. And it's like, the song wait. sounds great. Wait. But it is I evil. I heard it. <laughs> I heard it. I heard it on yes. Instagram, but I only heard a few seconds of it, right. and it was groovy as fuck. Right. But I did tune in. I'm like, oh, these are murder raps. It's, it's yeah. murder culture. It's evil. It's crazy. And the <laughs> other side... It's he did culture. the same thing. It's murder culture. But, he, he but we used had music a, like that. Uh, there yeah. was music like that in the 90s and shit, right. too. It's, it's murder culture. But bro. that's what is kind of funny is that a lot of that drill shit just sounds like it's supposed to be evil. Yeah. But, like, whenever you come, dudes come with something that sounds bright and cheery or at least, like, you know, mainstream, but then they also are doing the evil shit on it, that shit always blows up. Yeah. Well, that's I mean, a formula. It's the Nelly formula, bro. Do you remember Down Down Baby? Yeah. It's but Down I never... Down Baby, the street in the Range Rover, street sweeper, <laughs> cock ready to let it go. That's one of the ultimate All right? examples, and that yes. that shit was a big record. It's about a drive-by shooting. Right. 
So there you have it, man. <laughs> Very true. Yeah, that's it. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, did you, huh? I, he, 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 you have me not really thinking about that much. I yeah. definitely thought about it a little bit, but yeah, I kind of... it's a drive-by mm, shooting in the It's easy to put it out of your head. But it's just because it sounded like fucking a nursery rhyme. You didn't even know. Yeah, they shot the whole house up out of a Range Rover. Mm. They didn't even do it in a hoopty. I they called stunts. They hope, pulled up clean. I hope we're not giving them too much game. With a street sweeper. They're going to figure out the whole game right there. Nah, dude, I think everybody knows. That, that's, <laughs> that's the formula, bro. Yeah. That's the formula. It's all right. It's all right. It's cool, man. Sure. Dress it up. So you're uh, linking with Alchemist tonight, I hear? Yeah, absolutely. That's my next stop. Alchemist and Traumatone today. Okay. For sure. Yeah, me and Alchemist are like eight records in. We actually felt like we were finished. But I told them that I wanted to listen to them and then possibly do like three or four more records and add them to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We got a couple verses back from the people I wanted to. Like I sent one to Larry June. Ooh. I sent one to Styles P. Trying to get Larry June on here again. We oh, had him man, back yeah. in the day. Yeah, 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 yeah man. Fool will be here, man. Sent one to uh, Jim Jones. Um, shit, I'm going to see if Wiz out here, see if he pull up. I'll probably get Wiz on one. I just uh, hit up Jim Jones to do the interview. He said he's down, but he said he don't want to do any drama questions. So I'm going to have to be tricky because I'm going to have to figure out Where's start, the line? Start with start these. Start giving them those? <laughs> start, start with these, and then you probably can ask him pretty much anything. Man. Yeah. Three was it, too, bro. Soften them up. Three was it. Like, there it, there it is. There it is. I was going to tell y'all, the, like, a while ago, and it's almost instantly after I ate the third one. It showed up. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's it. I'm into those. Yeah. Definitely. That's cool. If that's I get cool. Jim Jones on edibles. Yo, Jim Jones is a stoner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Jim Jones won the fucking doobie doobie pothead stone mm. award at Thunder Mifflin. <laughs> no, nah, for sure, for sure, for sure. For I think sure. Toby was probably on it out in Costa Rica. Yeah, for sure. That's what he. Do you think for. he was the Scranton Strangler? <laughs> <laughs> oh, like <laughs> Voldemort. Uh oh. <laughs> it was Dwight first. You know what I'm saying? If anybody, it was Dwight because he knew he could get away with it. He knows all of that, so he definitely was the screen strength and then coming back to work. You ever think about hitting Angela? No, man. No. She was like she was a dick. I didn't mm. like Angela. But at doesn't all, that kinda bro. make you want to no, fuck her? Bro. No. No. no because <laughs> that is of my body. Bitch, you don't get nothing. I don't <laughs> like you. Like fuck no. You don't get to go tell nobody nothing you did, nothing, fuck no. You, you, never, you don't know what my house looked like. Nothing. You no. never fucked a girl in your life that you kind of were like, like annoyed a by. Fuck, like yeah, a, like, you kind of like enjoyed nah, it more because like you hated her a, her a little bit. If a motherfucker did me something, if a motherfucker did me something, and I say I wasn't gonna fuck with no more, and I did it again, then I'm like, all right, that's a grudge. Fuck, I will do that because it's like, all right, now nah, I'm not even gonna fuck with you no more. You know what I'm saying? But I've never been like, I can't stand you so much that I'm pulling up. Oh, here's my address. Mm. Fuck no, because. Nah. No. <laughs> Fuck no. No. Right. I can't even see you in the light. I can't see you like that. I don't see you like that. Mm. I don't in that like that that shit kills relationships with me. Like I not I don't I don't be with fucking like a, a ugly motherfucker, but like you do some ugly shit to me, mm. you become ugly. Right. I don't care no more. You can't apologize to me in fucking lingerie or nothing. It's like, because you are now a dude to me. You dude. pissed me off. You a dude You the me. one dude I can't punch. Like, you did some shit. I want to punch you. You a girl, so fuck it. You like a dude to me. Just fuck it, bro. Right. We done. Fuck it, bro. <laughs> you know, it's over with. <clears throat> so, no, no, no. The underrated, underrated transformation is how Kelly goes from being the most timid, fucking quiet Indian girl... To the oh. most bubbly, ridiculous okay. person by the end okay. of the show. Okay, well, it was uh, Sharon Drugs with Ryan. <laughs> you think that helped? Yeah, that's the un the unseen, the un you know unseen, <laughs> but definitely understood mm. that she was doing it. I mean, she's doing naked photo shoots in the office for him, mm. and wearing like size twos for no reason. The mm. fucking IT guy had to tell her, like, you're definitely not a size two. I've seen your emails. Mm. He saw the pictures that Ryan took of her. 
You know what I'm saying? And that's definitely from drugs. Mm. Like, they came back from that retreat and, like, let everybody know they was married. And then Ryan was crying a lot and all that shit. She was just full of drugs talking. I think they couldn't, like, show her as a heroin addict on TV because it would have been too controversial. I think that, yeah, her family might have been pissed. <laughs> that was her actual family. Yeah. Man. At the, what's it called? Was it? Diwali? At the fucking, uh, Diwali. That was her was actual it? family. I knew... Because I was like, those don't look like actors. And then I looked it up, boom, they're not actors. Those are real family. I like that you did that research. Mm. I like that you did that <laughs> research. I do that too, man. I devote a lot of time into like useless, like just like, yeah, right. I'm going to find out all the footnotes and, and fun facts about this. You know mm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Hell yeah. I know that Creed was in a band and he really played the right. guitar. And his name is really you know Creed. What I'm like was really doing that shit. And, right. he, and he's actually Creed. My girl is stressing me right now to go home because we just started watching the Son of Sam show on Netflix. About the killer? Uh huh. I never saw it. No, I haven't seen it. It's pretty captivating. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped about Black Monday with Don Cheadle and everybody. Do you watch that? No. It's about the stock market. The first two seasons are the 70s and the 80s. There's a billboard out here right now about season three, and uh, it's it's in the 90s. What's it called again? Uh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking uh, Black of him, Monday. Right, right, okay. Because speaking of him, dude, I just saw a Hotel Rwanda for the first time. That is depressing as fuck. Thank you. Yo, I didn't, I didn't see Hotel Rwanda. I walked in at the, at the fucking, at the height of the the slaughter scenes okay. and shit. And I was like, yeah, I'm cool. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Insane. I just saw that there was no, like, selection about who was getting shot. Right. I was like, damn, like, I don't give a fuck about nothing. Probably, like, the most yeah. brutal yeah. movie. Yeah. It, to think that it really went down, it's like... Yeah, see, that's the wild shit. Yeah. That's the wild shit, too. Yeah. Don't, but I, I did a don't bunch fall of, down that rabbit hole well, uh, doing that research. I, I did a bunch of research, and I found out that the fucking Rwandan people are very proud of how far they've come since then. And they've very much rebuilt. Yeah, and, well, uh, resiliency is, is something to They're be, doing all right now. Something to be Because I was thinking, I'm like, like, how that, the but, fuck do you come back from that? Well, like, you have to. You how know. don't you? But, like, how do you uh, start getting along yeah, after that man, happens? I, it's yeah, for sure, for sure, yeah. But uh, what's actually crazy is I but just but you heard, can't do that forever. Like, like you can't do mm, that forever. No, and I seen that. I seen you know, uh, documentary footage of people kill, talking you, about. You're gonna kill yourself out. You're gonna kill yourself out. That shit happens. So bro. and so and so and so live next door, and, and they're best friends. And this one's husband killed the other one's husband, and they just get past it because they just live next door, and it's just at some point they got to move on. They're just talking about it like it's whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Insane. But you know what's really fucked up is I just heard that a million people had to leave their fucking city in the Congo because of active volcanoes. When was this? Now? Like, right, like, yesterday. Oh, that's fucking crazy. Like, the volcanoes out there are no fucking yeah, joke, I look, dude. Yeah, I look at volcano eruptions on YouTube. My son liked to look at that shit. He's dude. in the volcanoes. Yeah, see, that, yeah, for me, when I was a little kid, it was all about volcanoes. But that is very... That's a real destructive thing. That's a fucking... That's like monster. A million people leaving their yeah. fucking village. Where did that's they like go? That's like Godzilla being real. They're just sleeping on that's other like people's legit, couches or that's what? That's legit like Godzilla Yo, th- being exactly. real. That's the same thing, bro. That's why kids are so that's obsessed fuck. with it. Yeah, my son is so into that. He's he into Godzilla and King Ghidorah. Mm. I watched King of the Monsters because of him. I'm pumped about Godzilla versus King Kong because Ooh. of him. Yeah. I don't have him. I don't have him right now. But, but I'm, like, not watching it. It's on Amazon. And even though he doesn't know, I'm not going to cheat on him. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like, it's not it's not my month, and I'm not going to watch it. I'll wait till it's my month to have him and put it on, you know? Right. Even though I could definitely rewatch it right in front of him, and he wouldn't know. Right. But, fuck it. I'm keeping it on though. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. You got to just figure out what's your volcano. What's your thing that still gives you that childlike wonder? Probably volcanoes. He woke that up in me. Still again. volcanoes. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like it's like Godzilla. Right. Because like dinosaurs, um, a long time ago, Trina woke this up in me. The the, the rapper, long time ago. She I don't know like, what, what does she have to say about dinosaurs. Dig it. Dig, dig it. Dig, dig this. It, dig it. Check it out. I'm smoking, hanging out. Everybody's hanging out. 
And I'm like, man, you think dinosaurs were like as big as buildings, you know? Cause I'm like looking at buildings and shit. And um, <laughs> she's like, I don't even think there were dinosaurs. So I'm like, what's up? <laughs> she's like, uh, yeah. So how could something that big die? Like, how did something wipe them out and they were that big? And I was like, oh, all right. And she was like, nobody ever found, like, a complete skeleton. It's always like, this is over here. This is in Wyoming. This is such and such a place. And we think that this is where it went and how it, how it fit. You know, she said that. I've seen complete skeletons, but I don't know if they were found complete. Right. You know, but I feel like dinosaurs were here, but I don't have the real, real evidence volcanoes are here right now <laughs> there's no so denying it i will liken it to a volcano right yeah for sure they're here right now it's, i think he's into dinosaurs i mean he's into volcanoes because of dinosaurs right all the footage of dinosaurs he sees volcanoes but that shit is right now still it's crazy how comfortable i am just allowing trina to be a dinosaur skeptic and you to an extent i was too. i will just give you i that. was like you know what i'm gonna do what i'm gonna do at, at that point you know what i'm saying like i i got it you're yeah. right you're right because I, I don't know i don't know the points that you raised i do not know mm. i do not know that they found all the bones to one in one spot i i don't know that so i had to ride with that right now i'm thinking about this though how many dinosaurs do you think fell into those volcanoes that are still active right now. I don't know. Probably Do you a lot. think any of them? Like, there's so many species of animal that we probably never knew about because they fell into that shit thinking it was just like a mountain. Right. And then it's that shit down in there and it melts their bones to juice and mm. we never even get to see the fossils. Never. Yeah. Hella dinosaurs. There's so T-Rexes, a lot of... Uh... Pterodactyls flying over the volcano, mid eruption, bow, mm. hit them in the sky, they fall into it, they're gone, they're juiced too. You know what's crazy is when I was a kid, Probably I saw King Kong. I saw Jurassic Park right when it came out. I didn't realize what that was going to become. Because that me shit neither. is like a religion to kids. Yeah, me neither. Um, I still watch part one. I never saw none of the other ones. I, I didn't even see part one I for saw like part 20 one, years. There was a fucking promotion at McDonald's. They had cups and a triple cheeseburger. Fucking, I was down with that. They had the dinosaur that spit on the fucking fat dude who was stealing the eggs uh, on the cup. I thought that was the shit. Okay. Um, that's that. I remember I jumped once or twice. You know what I'm saying? When I watched that shit. The first Jurassic Park was tight. Because your your it's, kid's going to become a Jurassic Park he junkie. Though. Nah, he fucks with He is it. already. Okay. I have to fast forward to all the dinosaur scenes. Oh. He doesn't give a <laughs> shit about man destroying Earth with technology and trying no to context. improve. He doesn't try to play God. He doesn't give a fuck about none of that shit. Were your kids like that? You, know? you just probably didn't even As soon as the fucking people start talking, he's like sticking his finger in my ear and shit. <laughs> like, ah, just making noise. I'm like, oh. You got it. I have to fast forward That's to the fucking dinosaur parts. He doesn't give a shit about that. Right. Even though this dude is crashing the world out, trying to play God and bring some shit back, you know. Wow. Just to prove to Trina that they once existed. Mm. That's what nobody even knows. That was the whole thing. He was trying to show Trina right. that dinosaurs existed. Definitely. These fucking kids and their <laughs> Trina worship. <laughs> <laughs> They're the worst. I always... Uh, think like when I look at my kid I always think there should be a baby president like the first ba like why don't the babies rise up and become their own party man honestly because we we want to exist in a world run by babies because of their honesty <laughs> but we aren't babies mm. So it's not gonna work out. Right. We have to be babies too because we can't benefit from that honesty because we're not. We're gonna try to take it to our advantage. Mm. We know how to do that, and that's where it won't work. We would have to be babies too, man. Right. It's really because being a baby is a transitory state. It's not even yeah, like a you ever race saw that or movie, a gender. Baby geniuses? No, Yo, but I know. Of okay, it. check it out. Yeah, I saw. I went to the movies to see. It. I don't give a <laughs> fuck. Um, these little shits. We're doing everything, mm. karate, laboratory experiments, right. all of this shit as babies. But it's because once you cross over and you can talk as a person, like then you forget all of that good shit that you knew. You're a genius 
until you can talk to people. Mm. As soon as you say, like, fucking mama or something, you forget it. Right. You were building rockets and shit right before that, though. Wow. So that's how that's what they say about the baby. Like your <laughs> your your baby is super smart right now, just putting it all together. Yeah. And you're like, doobie doobie doop. And she's like, Why are you doing that? You could definitely talk. It's to fun me. to just like hypothesize about what babies could be capable of. Yeah. <laughs> Even though yeah. in reality they do nothing. For sure. And if it wasn't for you, they would die. For sure. But for sure. it's for fun sure. to but just like create these process <laughs> and all of this stuff. I, and honestly, I think they are. I think they are to a certain extent, man. The baby geniuses uh, theory, I feel like it might be true. Mm. Once the babies can talk, they forget that they knew all of that shit. Mm. They kind of got to get it again. Right. That's what happens. I'm at a very specific stage in my kid's development where she wants my phone all the time. Mm. <clears throat> but if I take my phone and hide it or like put it in my pocket, she still looks for the phone but she doesn't understand that I just put it away right in front of her, <laughs> which is funny because, like, for a while, she wanted the phone, but then when the phone wasn't there, she didn't want the phone anymore. And pretty soon, she's going to realize that I'm just putting it somewhere. For sure. But for right now, you it's the magic. biggest mystery in the world. Yeah, too, right, right now, yeah. you know magic. That stuff doesn't last for long. Mm. None of it. <laughs> it just gets smart as fuck. This is not fuck. your first kid. No, it's my kid? first one, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. So it's mine. It's mine too, but right. let me just lay some shit on you. Mm. Uh, none of that lasts. You know magic like for a week with stuff like that. You're unstoppable. You're a warlock for a week. So the whole a thing warlock. is to always stay on top of it. Mm. Always stay able to mesmerize. Mm. When I felt like my son had seen all my tricks... I FaceTimed him from the other room. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew that I fucking blew his brains out. Because we're watching TV and he's like, Earth. I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm like, you know everything, man. So I'm like, all right, I bet you don't know this shit. I just fucking just sat the phone right there, <laughs> stepped out and fucking called myself. And he's like, ah! He fucking <laughs> holding it. He comes out. He's looking at me and I screenshot it as he's looking like, Fucker. Like, he's like, oh, man, like, that was the craziest shit. But now I'm, like, trying to think of what else I could do. Right. Yeah, I probably should have saved that one a little bit more, but. Right. You know, yeah. Oh, you man. always got to think about shit you could do, bro. That's it. You know? Mm, you always got to be able to do backflips, Keep them a captive yep. audience. You got to be a wizard forever. Mm. Yeah. That's tight. That's it. Here I am being a fucking parental expert two years in. I think a lot of people appreciate it. Two years it. in, one month on, one month off, and I'm fucking <laughs> telling them how to do it. <laughs> I hope I'm not doing too much, but how is that one month on, one month off? It's tough, you know, because, like, when it's not my, when it's not my month, like, I wish it was. Mm. But, but it's also, like, a cool thing because I could throw myself into my work. Because when I got them, I don't want to do shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's cool because the motherfucker understand that balance. Mm. It's like I get to shut down on work, and, you, and everybody get it. But then when it's on, the engineer don't trip if I want to do like I just did 18 songs. Mm. They're like the motherfucker can't trip because it's like I right, he ain't here to do that up. shit. Yeah, he ain't here to do it. Yeah. So it's on. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Respect. <clears throat> um, anything in particular that they should uh, look out for? Uh, Welcome to Jet Life, Volume 2. Welcome to Jet Life Recordings, Volume 2. I'm going to try to take a bit of a backseat this time. I was on a lot of the songs were solo, and uh, a few of the songs featured the artists on uh, Volume 1. Uh -huh. And this time, um, I'm on the gang of the records, but some of them I'm just doing hooks on. Uh -huh. Some of them I have a verse on, you know what I'm saying? But I'm letting everybody else kind of definitely go on the more of the light, you know what I'm saying? For and sure. Setting up their they separate, their solo projects and shit. Outside of that, it's about what me and Alchemist are about to finish up this evening and what me and Traumatone finish up later on tonight, you know? Oh, yeah. That's that. Yeah. He, yeah. And he also produced the bulk of... Uh, the volume two of the uh, Jet Life Recordings project. Okay. He did fuck. We we twenty records up right now. Hell yeah. So fourteen of those are probably that project. Okay. So I'm saying the bulk of it. He did the whole fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. 
You're not tripping. I'm not tripping. Mm. You no. Know, and and if I could get a, a a pouch of these, I'll perhaps leave with this. You one. could keep it that I one for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm sure and they'll send you. We're probably gonna make some pretty good music off these. I could imagine. Because I don't have to do anything with my fingers, and it's a body high. Hmm. But I could imagine how producers are gonna feel like just and their fingers are high. That's probably good. That's good beats they're gonna make. Hmm. Yeah, and I'm gonna provide that for them. That's ah, cool, man. Appreciate Thanks, that. Man. Definitely. Those work. Hey. And they taste good. They taste Stupid good. Stupid good. They taste good. And One thousand milligrams. I left them in the car and they high. melted. And oh, they... just a hundred milligrams That's... a piece. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, three of them. That's the secret. Yeah. <laughs> Got to eat three. That's 300 milligrams right there. That's, that's Math. Good. That should do it. Math. Yeah. Andrew Yang. Um, Fucking right. But they melted into a goop in the bag in the car. What did you do? I ate the goop. Yeah. As Pause. a one piece? Pause. As a one piece? <laughs> Yeah, and then not the whole do- bag. It was like oh, two or three. That's what I want to know about. No, I, I, I no, munched no. it throughout the course I of a night. I want this to fucking melt into one thing, mm. and you eat it like a bear claw, fuck, or like a cinnamon roll, and yeah. then come in here and just set it up. Just melt it down. <laughs> cut the mics on. Put it in a syringe. In and shoot get that it shit up. Cut the lights on, and ask pertinent questions, and just conduct yourself. Get it. Well, you get a spoon. <laughs> put something on the spoon. Heat it up. I don't really know yeah. how they do all that, but something like that. Nah, get, nah just sit it on the dashboard. You mm. know what I'm saying? Let it melt into <laughs> Go one. Go to work. Yeah, Come let out. this bitch melt into one and just do the shit. Summer dog. day. <laughs> Edible should not be mixed with don't any put it in kind the microwave. of controlled substance. Oh, man. Mm. So stay I'm off like the pills, buddy. I'm so many controlled substances with this. Are you kidding me? What, like what? I'm the controlled substance king. More weed? Like, uh, I was going to have some champagne. And there's there's a mug there's a mug. what's this root beer, what's in this mug is this is this beer or root beer? Oh yeah yeah, don't it's probably it root beer. No no no, I can probably go and get shit face drunk and it won't interact with this. They say oh, don't interact. drink a mug of root beer. This is the mug of root beer that Snoopy would always. I get. feel like that's soda safe. Why was Snoopy drinking that root beer on? It was like at bad times in his life on Charlie Brown. You remember? Did he, you yeah, remember yeah. seeing him at a bar with a mug of root beer? Mm. What would drive How'd him? How you know that? it was root beer? It, it could have been anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it said Ruby on it. But I wonder what drove him to that. I'll check that out when I get out. Charlie Brown's so underrated. Yeah. And because you could only see it for specials. Mm. It wasn't just on because it was Saturday. It's like Thanksgiving and mm. he's going to see the great But they did have a Halloween. regular series as well, too, right? I never saw it. I liked it because it was sad. I saw a 3D version of it. It was sad. It really made it feel Charlie like it was Brown okay was to be sad, you know? Like, <laughs> it was no. real. It was always overcast skies yes. and shit just not working out. And Damn, that was relatable. Bro. That's real, dog. You know? That's cool, bro. But Charlie Brown and fucking Garfield. Garfield, those same were thing, the ones really. we could only see at f- for specials. I didn't mm. know Charlie Brown had a fucking think so, right? syndicated TV show. I-, I think maybe he had like a 3D version when we were too old to give a shit. But I don't think that that Charlie Brown Peanuts crew... Like playing the piano and peppermint patty and shit, mm. they were only around for holidays. Honestly, that shit was kind of designer, and your local cable outlet might not have been able to afford it. Maybe they only had it because I was in possibly. a night neighbor, <laughs> nice neighborhood. Quite possibly. <laughs> Are you sure, man? I think so, man. What's up? Can we? I'm sorry. There's we, no way they wouldn't somebody, have made use of that IP. They didn't have that. They didn't have that, bro. They didn't have that. <sighs> when in the 80s and 90s? I think it was, it was a local thing. They had a Charlie Brown series, right? In Garfield, what, for sure. In, in what time frame? I, I watched the Garfield TV series, and his kids said it was the worst, most boring thing they had ever seen. They thought it was in, so Garfield whack. Garfield TV series? Look, boy, look at <laughs> Number of seasons, one. Number of episodes, 37. I agree, that's not when? really that much. When? What year was this? Uh... Wait, this article is about the 2014 animated yeah, series. Yeah, that's bullshit. 2014. 2014. Those dudes back then, that shit was not coming on. It was for specials, man. It was the <sighs> Great Pumpkin. The Charlie Brown and Snoopy show. When? Season one title card. Season, Ryan. they had two seasons in the 80s. Look at that. Why did they only keep it around for that long? That's insane. And it didn't do well. <laughs> yeah, like, what the fuck? People only want, you know what? Because Charlie Brown was so humdrum, people yeah. didn't want to see that every day. Yeah. People didn't want their kids looking at those gray skies yeah. every day. It's like, no, you fuck. just be bummed out for Thanksgiving. Charlie never shut shit up. Damn, bro. 
That's crazy. He never did nothing. That was a cool shirt he had, and he was like also struggling with his hair. I always kind of looked. On in the game. I, I, I looked had, up like, to um, two pieces. Of hair. Yeah, <laughs> I looked up to Charlie Brown because he wore the same shirt every day. I always thought that, no, that was kind of cool. tight. I thought Pigpen was tight because <laughs> he stank. That fucking, I didn't know it was a stank cloud. It was just like a cloud. Like Pigpen's the shit dragging that blanket around. You got that one homie Linus who just stinks. Was cool. You know how the homie was stank. Yeah. Yo, dude, bro. Over the I years, I've had nice, that friend. Super nice to this dude, bro. And and everybody would tell me like he smelled like pee. Oh my god, pee. Yeah, That's awful. it was crazy because I smelled it too, and I was just like, man, it's like y'all's washing machine. Like y'all got to wash clothes with the baby clothes. Or I don't know what goes on over here. You know what mm. I'm saying? But that was it. It was bad. Honestly, we used to ride BMX with this fucking kid that we called Tookie, and I think it was he just. At some point, it just became a joke that he looked like a crib, and some and somehow they started calling him Tookie, and that dude stank, Damn. terrible. Damn. I happened, hope he got control bro. of that at some point. Maybe yeah, it was just because he was out riding bikes at that time. Yeah, well, you know, he might have been riding bikes without deodorant, or it might have been the crib. Mm. It might have been the crib, bro. I had the one homie whose house was insane, mm. and I was like almost relieved when I went there. And figured it out. Because, like, every time he came to kick it, it's like, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> this house stank. Yeah, it was nuts. But then we went to his crib to kick it. It was like, oh, so, like, they don't even mm. know. They don't know because they're in here hanging out. You know what I'm saying? Nobody is in here tripping. Mm. We in that bitch, like, like, fucking trying to take short breaths and shit. Nobody fucking knew, though, you know? When I was in uh, seventh grade, there was always this girl, this Indian girl, like, the only Indian girl at school. And I, I never understood why she smelled way different. And then I went to her crib, and her, mo- and her mom was cooking food. And then I understood. Yeah, boom. Yeah, a house can hold it. A yeah. house will hold it. A house will hold it. You know what I'm saying? You either smell good or smell bad, depending on the crib. You know what I'm saying? It can work out like Best case this. scenario is that your house is ventilated enough that you don't end up smelling like the food in your house. Like that, or the best case scenario is that motherfuckers are using Fabuloso. <laughs> And fucking, you know, burning incense and shit yeah. like that in the house, man. That works, too. Right. Opening the, the patio door and shit, you know. I, I had this girl I used to kick it with, and one time she was she was about to come over, and she's like, I have to go home and shower. I'm like, why do you have to go home and shower? She's like, I just ate Korean barbecue. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what are you talking about? Like, just come over. Yeah. She came over. She smelled like Korean barbecue, like a Doesn't. mother. She, she was not joking. There. She was there. She it was got in, place. in her it hair permeates. and her it's clothes. It's in her skin. They man. cook it right in front of you, so yeah. it infects everything you about you. You should take that fucking shower, man. I she should have, honestly. It. She was the one in the car talking to you. She knew that she was having a tough time riding with herself, and she was going to have to bring that shit to your house. I wasn't mad, though. Yeah, I could dig it. Yeah. I could dig it, but you definitely witnessed it. She tried to spare you. Shout out to all You're the girls smelling like Korean it, barbecue. It happened. It stuck with you. Mm. And she tried to spare She you. made a dent. That's her brand. Huh? That's her brand. She's... Pull up she's stinking a, like oh, Korean barbecue. I thought her brand was Korean, but I thought she <laughs> no, opened the Korean barbecue place. I don't know if she's still doing this move, but oh, it's a no, move. I thought, I thought she was a purveyor of Korean It's like your barbecue. brand. Like, when you show up and you stank like weed, which admittedly, like, I didn't yeah. notice because our, our place already smells yeah. like weed, but Yeah, but that's what I'm brand. supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, come on. It's my products. Bro, I had, to, I had to go to court in Compton, and we pull up. In the line, the long ass COVID line to get in, with me and my homie and everybody in line just talking to us about weed because <laughs> we just pulled up stinking. Yeah. And it was like. That's what happens. Like, that's nice. <laughs> you know, I like that. I appreciate the bringing that to the function. All right, currency. I appreciate you, man. Dig, man. Good times. This was a good time, bro. For sure, man. It was a good time. And thanks for the 2020. Of course. These were fucking incredible. Yeah. And I get to roll out with them. I hope we get you. Y'all, so you got so many packs of papers, bro. Just roll a joint. Roll a joint. Bro. Soon. I'll stuff a few cones for you for you to just My keep. My fingers are too fat. Oh, Can't shitty manipulate excuse. it. Shitty excuse, man. Now, I was on spliffs for a while. Now I'm about to roll up. Alchemist do that shit, too. He put cigarettes oh. in them. Yeah, no, That's I can't have those doing? around. That's what you were doing? No, nah, I would have a bag of loose tobacco. I couldn't have the cigarettes because I would just start smoking them and I'll get the addicted. Tobacco into the- yeah. He's so bougie. No jumper. Coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, (laughs) iTunes. Like, comment, subscribe. You didn't have to come back. I was just going to do it. Yeah. Nojumper.com if you want to (laughs) support. Jet Life. 
Friday we'll be streaming your music. Appreciate all y'all. Shout out to Laura. Yeah. Shout out Trev filming behind the scenes. Let's go. Boom.